This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. We are in the south of France for a special event a week before the iRacing 24 Hours of Le Mans. And we are taking place, this race is taking place around the circuit, the South, otherwise known as Le Mans. And well, what an event we have for you today. The BMW 120 at Le Mans, featuring the BMW M8 GTE car. So they're going to be an interesting race, two hours team event here for you. And this is going to be streamed all race long on the iRacing Esports Network. Coverage brought to you by Racebot TV. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Smith. And alongside me in the commentary booth is Randy Cheneff. And Hugo Lewis is behind the cameras as well for us here today. And well, Randy, we're just getting into the start of qualifying. And... Uh, Really, these drivers have had about half an hour to get a bit of practice in, get a bit of a warm up feel for the track. It's going to be a, a, an interesting race, is this one, I feel. It really is. It's been a while since we've done sort of these, especially around this track. We tend to do so many of the big, long endurance events. We typically see these guys buzzing around here for 24 hours. Here today, for just 120 minutes, it's still going to be a team event, so you're still going to see some driver swaps. And with the shorter format, it's actually going to make, I think, for a really interesting race with the way driver swaps will all work out. Should be an exciting couple hours to see who can win themselves a trip to Le Mans. Absolutely. As, uh, as you mentioned there, there are some prizes on offer for this event as well. So the top split winners will receive two BMW M Mudspot VIP tickets for the long, more 24 hours. So that includes the event ticket from Friday to Sunday, guest parking as well Friday to Sunday, access to the BMW M Mudspot, hospitality, including catering. That's my uh, favorite point, part of VIP. Uh, and on the Friday, as well. <laughs> Friday afternoon to Saturday, Sunday afternoon as well. Uh, BMW M Mudspot welcome package, event program in the BMW Mudspot, uh, M Mudspot hospitality, BMW M Mudspot event, uh, evening event, Event on Friday. That sounds interesting. That should be a good, uh, good time there. Guided tours as well through the paddock and the pit, pit areas. Uh, and additionally, one random split winning team will receive a Club Sport BMW GT2 steering wheel as well as $50 in iRacing credit. So there's not just prizes for the, the top split, there's also prizes for the winning team in other splits as well. So uh, plenty for these teams to all fight for here, Randy. And that's great to see, and especially, I think, for the lower splits as well. We have three splits on offer today, so for those who are unaware, that basically means we have three separate racing as, uh, events at once happening here. We're in the currently the top broadcasted one, uh, is the one we're showing you, which has the best racers on the service as well as some BMW factory drivers who are going to be buzzing around as well, who are Philip Eng and Nikki Casper. You see that number 25 car currently being qualified by Philip Eng out there on track, coming out of the Molson cor Molson corner and down the run towards Indianapolis. So, and that's actually going to be what's really fun to watch because Philip Eng and Nikki Casper are both very active on the service, Paul, both BMW factory drivers and. We don't typically see them in sort of world championship level competition, but they have world championship level competition they'll be dealing with today. It's going to be fun to see them try to work through it. Yeah, it's going to be uh, great to see them, uh, how they get on. It's a sneaky little bit of practice for what's uh, coming up with Le Mans. The first few qualifying times are coming in, though. Pure Racing Team Blue currently set as pull provisionally here. Jonas Wallmeyer for them. The Williams Esports second place with VRS Quanda Simspot. Mitchell De Jong third place as well for them. So uh, the times are coming in. We're just coming to have a look at the uh, SRB Racing 
Uh, team were on board with them through Porsche curves and uh, he's taking it pretty well. It's a tricky cut set of corners, especially in these GTE cars. They do have a good set of uh, downforce in these GTE cars, but it's still a very challenging sequence of corners for them here. Right it definitely is. Porsche curves probably the most uh, most difficult sequence of corners on the track. I was certainly wrecked, and I will say, we, we get that first sort of assault of qualifying time cycling through, and I'm not surprised whatsoever by the top three, Pure Racing Team, William Vsports, and Beerus Coinus Insport, all within a second of one another through those first set of time, uh, timed laps. Philip Eng, though, of BMW Team Ketang, works their way through the Ford chicane and off down the front straightaway. Let's see what sort of time Phil can go to on his opening qualifying lap here. And that actually didn't count, so it looked like he would have collected a 1X somewhere. So he's only yeah. got a couple minutes to actually get the second lap in, and I'm not sure Phil will have time to do so. No, he won't have time to do that. There's only 2 minutes 20 remaining in this uh, qualifying session, and unlike uh, an open qualifying session when it's a closed qualifying session on IRA, you only have the amount of time that is available in the session you cannot if you've started a lap that doesn't matter you don't get to finish it if you don't if you run out of time so uh, that is bearing in mind worth bearing in mind so they're gonna have to work their way through the field in this one but uh, we were mentioning this before the broadcast and I do want to address by the way I do apologize uh, it is of course not in the south of France I was thinking of other race tracks in France it is in the uh, sort of more north of France's Le Mans but um, these uh, drivers they're gonna have to work their way through the field here but luckily fortunately for them Le Mans it is quite a, an open track so you do have the room to be able to make moves but with it all being the same car throughout this uh, throughout this race and throughout this event, Randy, it's not it's not going to be that easy to get past people. You're definitely right. I mean, normally when we come to this racetrack, we're always talking about balance and performance, be it with these GTE cars, the GT3 machines we have on the sim, or even the GT1 cars back in the day before we had the sort of modern era of racing cars that have cycled through the last few years. But here today, it's, it's you know, basically a, a spec event. Open setup is this event, so people can, you know, can, of course, play with their ride heights and wing angles and tire pressures and cambers and all the goodies you have to mess with in these cars on the iRacing service. But outside of that, you're, you're pretty much, you know, everyone's gonna be in the same bit of machinery. All the cars are pretty much going to draft up on each other the exact same way. Uh, and you're probably not going to see big discrepancies in performance at some parts of the racetrack compared to others the way you might in uh, when we have different manufacturers on track. So it's great to see BMW supporting this event. We're currently riding on board with the VRS Quinn Assistant number eight car, currently getting wheeled by Mitchell De Jong. He's heading down towards the final Ford chicane. He wants to try to put himself better than third best. And he's just about going to manage that flies over the curbs of the uh, Ford chicane there at the end of the lap across the line he goes that time it is an improvement however it doesn't count so there you go that is qualifying up and over and we'll be able to take you through your starting grid here for this BMW 120 at Le Mans event here and uh, well as we uh, get the graphic up on the screen there we go it is pure racing team blue who do take pole position ahead of williams esport by uh, four tenths of a second vrs squad the sim spot third and uh, uh yeah that's uh, that's a team in fourth <laughs> place uh, that's uh, estre madura uh, in fourth Fifth place, Williams, Jimmy Spot with Agent K in sixth. Motef Project Black in seventh. And then the XCM Antole Red Car in eighth. So Red Spot Esports in ninth. And then the BMW 120 Join Me team round out the top ten, Randy. And then you start cycling down a little bit further. You got KC Racing Esports in the 11th spot with Muka Motorsports Sim Racing. Hashtag Pink in 12th. HR Racing and Leo Racing Team. They'll make up that seventh row in 13th and 14th. Speed Asylum and Virtual Apex Racing Group Gold, row number eight, 15th and 16th. Luka Motorsport and Kinetic Racing Velocity on the row number nine with SRT Esports and AAR Blue rounding out your top 20. It's a cheese of wine then, 21st and a V Racing Le Mans uh, team. 
And uh, I'll tell you what, I've picked the wrong rows to be able to go through this. Xiu uh, Diao con El Oja at Racing Team with Romelio Motorsports, LFO Racing, RF Aro, Asymmetric, Orange uh, Mechanic, and then Impact Racing and V Racing Team GT rounding out the uh, top 30. We are getting ready for the uh, pull away of the uh, the drivers here shortly, but Randy running to take us through the rest of the road. So your tail end while Paul kindly gets through all the non-English base names, Volcano and Vertex on row 16, Team LFO BMW with Vertex Motorsports, another Vertex car starting just behind at Graphrite and Team at Unique. Project and Sub Racing, L Cubed and Motorless Motorsport, Impulse Racing and SRB Racing, BMW Team Katang, that's the team of factory drivers of Phil uh, Eng and Nikki Katzberg will be keeping an eye on to, with, along with Team Andres Espinosa, Devotion BMW, Schubert Motorsport, Boosted Red, and Just Print Racing Black as the field pulls away and up towards Porsche Curse. Yep. So there we go. That is the uh, the field as it stands. We've got drivers pulling out to the side there. So the, the field's all bunching up here. Hopefully there's not an accident whilst we're behind the safety car because uh, it's all getting a little bit um, crazy there behind. It's a slow pace lap from uh, from Jonas Wallmeyer. Of course, we're not, going, not having to do the full pace lap here. We're just before the Porsche curves. So, um, yeah. I think these uh, these drivers are going to be uh, taking it easy as they go through Porsche curves and uh, head towards the start of this race. Just final thoughts before we get going, Randy. What do you think is going to be the key to this one? You're going to be really want to be focused on keeping the slipstream here. It's only a two-hour race, and the draft we know is mega. As you go down the Mulsanne, of course, that's straight in towards Porsche curves run out of Molson Corner and down towards Indianapolis as well. You need to be smart in the traffic because of that. You don't want to try to make a pass that ends up seeing you lose the slipstream of the car in front of you. If you drop if you drop out of the toe, it's going to make your pretty much that first stint and your run through that second stint very, very difficult. You may not focus on that in a 24-hour event, but here for two hours, you really need to keep in the slipstream of the cars ahead of you to keep yourself moving forward. Well, the tricolor is up in the sky with the Jets, and we're all set then for the start of this special event. Thank you very much to uh, everybody joining us here on the RAC Esports Network coverage with uh, Racebot TV. And it's Pure Racing Team Blue from pole position. Get the hammer down. The green flag is in the air and we're away for two hours of racing around Le Mans. We've got issues for one car further back. was having a little bit of an issue, but everybody seems to be getting through the final chicane. Okay, so far as we're heading down towards the first chicane, there's a change of lead already. Pure Racing Team dropping down to second place because it this is the uh, Williams eSports team. Lauren Heinrich taking the lead in this one so far as they go through, through the Dunlop S, heading towards Tet Rouge for the first time. And uh, Pure Racing team not having the best of starts here. They've got a couple of cars behind them. That's the eight and the nine, the triple nine car as they're going down onto Mulsanne for the first time here. But so far, so good. Everybody seems to be behaving themselves. Just one car having issues. That's Project First GT team. They've fallen to the back of the field. But everybody else seems to be uh, getting on well so far here, Randy, as the slipstream comes into effect. They have, and I like that move from Lauren Heinrich up into the Dunlop chicane for the first time. Mitchell DeYoung going to try to wheel it around the outside of Jonas Wohlmeyer. That's not going to work out, and Mitchell might just have himself a slowdown after that run through the first chicane. He flashes the headlights at the pure racing team car out ahead of him. Doesn't seem like he's picked up a slowdown, but what an opening half a lap from Lauren Heinrich. He picks up the lead really through turn one and turn two, and now he's already out to nearly a second and a half lead here. He's already broken the toe, as here comes Mitchell now back to the outside and Carlos Duguez from Instrumente El Rapidero team who I'm sure I butchered he tries to make it three wide into the second chicane well he didn't butcher it any worse than I did that's for sure but that's uh, that's Mitchell De Jong up into second place use the draft use the slipstream to move into that second place now he'll be trying to chase down 
the leader who's already 1.6 seconds ahead and will have broken the draft here. This is a perfect start for Lauren Heinrich here in this one. And, uh, well, going into Mulzahn corner now for the first time. A little bit of a touch there from the Pure Racing team car. And through the go, we've seen to got a little bit of a bunch together here. Of what's that? About eight cars all together in that second through to ninth position. As they're heading down towards Indianapolis for the first time in this race. Very fast right hander into a slow left, and then you're heading to Arnage. And look at this, they're going to go four wide. Oh. Almost four wide, heading into Indianapolis there. That's not wise to do here, Randy, because it all just narrows down, and it's just really a single line through this section. There's not very many racetracks in the world where you can pit for, uh, put four of these big mates uh, side by side and have them all fit. Uh, and certainly that run into Indianapolis is not one of them. Um, as these guys uh, are able to get themselves pretty much single filed out as they work through. Pretty much the whole field still looking clean. Couple cars with some slight damage. I think mostly just minor taps up and down the field. There's been a couple of spins. But beyond that, I think everything's still looking relatively well for everyone. Keep an eye on Phil Ang and that BMW Team Katang car. They're still running. No damage on that machine as they work themselves out of the, uh, the Arnon chicane on the run up towards... Uh, Porsche Kerr is going to work the draft on David Dendelo and that Devotion BMW machine, and he's going to make that move look easy. So I definitely think right now for Phil, I think he actually has a little bit of speed. They actually didn't really even get a practice. Actually, no, they were quick in practice. They were six quick in practice. So there is good speed in that car. Uh, it's going to be an interesting run seeing them really rebound and work themselves through. Something else we need to keep an eye on and keep our minds on, Paul, is fuel strategy. You can't typically go a full hour here at Le Mans. So for these guys, could they maybe fuel safe to stretch it to that one hour mark? We may already be seeing split strategies at the head of the field with the likes of Lauren Heinrich blitzing away at the head of it and everyone else seemingly uh, keen on keeping the slipstream. Maybe some fuel strategy games already at play between some of your top tier teams. Don't forget, this is a team event, so two drivers will be taking part in this one. One thing I noticed that I was uh, looking at whilst we're keeping an eye on that battle for 42nd and 41st for that uh, BMW team, uh, Team Katang, as they go through into 41st. Oh, we've got a car round, and that is the uh, 023 car. They've stopped, they're getting back going again. And that's right on the entry to Tet Rouge. Not the best place to be at trying to get back up to speed. And they're going to lose a bunch of time. And it was on the exit there of uh, of the uh, the S's there. And we'll see it on replay here. And I just think they maybe just caught the curb wrong. Yep, and outside onto the grass, spun it round. They did keep it out of the wall, though. That's important with this car, Randy. Definitely. And, well, I mean, not just important with this car, important with this circuit as it's very, very tight there with cars cycling through because it's not just, you know, the, here you have sort of a, a, a double-sided uh, issue. Of course, you get damaged, you're going to lose some downforce, not be as quick through the corners. You're also going to really struggle down the straightaways. And we just mentioned fuel strategy. When you get that aero damage and you're struggling that extra little bit in top speed, that's going to really hurt your fuel consumption as well and drive that absolutely through the roost. So it's always uh, it's always horrible when you are do these Le Mans, style, uh, these Le Mans events and get yourself damaged early and because it's just basically a frustrating thing to deal with trying to work the slipstream and make passes on cars. I will say, now working lap two, whole field really single filing itself out. We have one car, I think, serving a slowdown down Mulsan. That's Jason Harrison in the AAR blue car. He's going to lose a few spots and cycle back in line. But besides that, most of your field playing pretty nice and the single filed their way out relatively quick. We also had the uh, Speed Asylum team with Richard Gofenko have uh, an issue down at the second chicane on the Mulsanne. They're back up and running there and uh, able to get going, but down in 28th position after that one down the Mulsanne straight. But yeah, everybody's just trying to find their feet here. One thing that I, uh, I will mention that I did notice is that the Pure Racing Team car seems to me that they, um, when they were heading into the uh, Ford chicane at the end of the lab, they were depressing the clutch pedal, letting the engine revs drop, just trying to save fuel any way that they can. I mean, really, wouldn't normally want to do that in a race car, but here, they're trying everything they can to try and save that fuel 
felt when it comes to the pit stops, it just works that little bit better in their favor. And especially this event, Paul, it's actually really unique because you have a nice sort of spread, uh, let's say spread of talent in this field. At the head of the field, you have several of your teams and several of your drivers that we see represented in all of the world championships we have on the iRacing service, be that in the Porsche Esports Super Cup, be that from the old world championship Grand Prix series we used to have, and some of the other championships as well. You also think about the Rallycross Championship, which who's, with, uh, who's currently behind the wheel of that eight car. And then you, you sort of start working your back you know, through the field and you start not having as many of those top tier and top level drivers, not necessarily bad drivers, nothing against them whatsoever, but just people who are still above it, likely above average and still pretty quick to manage uh, their way up in the top split and be running near the head of the field. Uh, and then of course, when you get a little bit further back, you get more to more of your sort of, uh, let's say mid pack teams. When you think about the iRacing service, you don't typically see a big spread like this. We have the 28 around in the Ford Chicane. That's an issue as well as Felipe Paiva in the SRB Racing number car. So a couple of rounds, a couple of cars oh, around through that oh. final sequence of corners. And I don't think we have any big contact there, but man, that was scary with some of the re-entries happening. Scary place for you to go around. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not ideal. We're well, looking at it on the replay. It was a little bit of a send into the uh, chicane to start with. And then both drivers decided to re-enter at the same time and pretty much blocked the track. Luckily, everybody else was able to avoid them. One team will have ended up with a slowdown penalty there. But um, yeah, questionable maneuver to start with and questionable rejoin as well. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. Um, as drivers work their way now at the head of the field in towards the first chicane. I'm doing a little bit of riding on board and listening with Mitchell de Jong, the braking zone into the first chicane that time. We're still getting a replay of that sort of stack up we had. Mitchell was saving fuel up the run up into the first chicane. I'm going to now ride on board with Lauren Heinrich, who's blitzed away from the field at four seconds. Let's see if this Williams Esports car is maybe lifting and saving a little bit early, just looking at the rev. Doesn't seem that way. You ride on board with Mitchell, and he's well off the throttle, basically 200 meters before the braking zone. So fuel saving definitely coming from second place on back, I would wager. That number two car, Williams Esports, they want to go the opposite strategy and really do this all on pace. Yeah, they certainly do. They're uh, just trying to... I mean, the thing is, if you can make a massive gap at the front of the field, it just gives you a little bit of breathing space to take that little bit of extra time in the pit stop. And... Uh, gives you that uh, opportunity that way but you are going to be using just that little bit more fuel if you're not in the uh, in the slipstream so uh, definitely not ideal for them but i suppose really in, in any race if you can get out to the front and pull away that's that's what you really want at the end of the day and you also of course have the strategy at work as well paul the two-hour race um and it's important to keep in mind we started this race sort of in the early morning hours here in oh, France. Oh, we've got a big got? incident down at Mulzahn. Mulzahn corner, it's the 182 is around. Uh, there's been another couple of teams involved in this one as well. Hopefully we'll be able to get a replay of this. It's down at Mulzahn. The 182 goes deep and there's another one in front as well. So two teams involved and look at all the cars trying to get out the way of them. Oh, one team just collects the other there and uh, that really was quite a big incident, Rev. Uh, it must be said, the 182 is back up and running now, but um, yeah, that was um, little, two, two teams having separate mistakes there. That's what it seemed like. It, it almost seemed like maybe a car at the head of the field missed the braking, excuse me, at the head of that little train, missed the braking zone, and that sort of caused everyone in the train to miss it just a little bit the way that they all sort of stacked up with one another. So relatively light contacts. One car does lose their nose. So I'd imagine they're going to come down pit road, I'm sure, and get that repaired with an hour and 45 minutes still left to go in this event. But you know, just talking about the strategy once again, Paul, you of course have options here with how you work these pit stops. I think some of these teams, if they're trying to do this on one stop, you're likely going to come down, take a full fuel stop, and probably tires as well when you take your driver swap. With the, what the two car is doing and the pace Lauren Heinrich is seemingly going on and working with, it seems to me they're going to try to do this as much as they can on fuel only. I think that's the only way you can make the two-stop strategy work is to not take tires. Both times you'll be coming down pit road. So it's going to be interesting to see for this number two car of Lauren Heinrich and Williams Esports how they manage their fuel and how they manage their equipment. 
and just checking back in with the 25 BMW Team Katang car. Been a nice opening lap for them. Nice handful of opening laps for them. Started 43rd, currently find their, uh, themselves running 30th. There was an issue at Fall Chicane for the uh, V Racing Racing Team Le Mans, but the, all of the self spins in the back of the down in 41st there. Uh, but yeah, great start from that uh, BMW Team Katang up from 43rd on the grid to 29th and here look at the front of the field now change of position and that is second place up to second place Jonas Wallmeyer pure racing team blue up into that position there so they're up and running it's just a slipstream move there on the uh Kwanda Sim Spot car and uh even Mitchell Dion got out of it there so uh, they're playing the game, playing the strategy game, maybe working together to maybe try and slipstream the way up to the race leader here. That could be a possibility. Definitely could be a little bit, but I'd say just looking at the lap times, I, I don't even think it's there. You think about the fact that these people are in the draft. I mean, just look at the times they did last time through. Lauren Heydrich and William Eastport, three minutes, 45 seconds flat that trip around the racetrack. Jonas Bullmeyer and Mitchell de Jong, three minutes, 46.8. So a nearly a two second difference for uh, from your leaders to that second running group of cars. So I don't think there's any hope of them trying to catch them on raw lap times at the moment, Paul. It doesn't seem like that's what they're really going for. I think this is probably just Jonas, you know, maybe having a little bit of speed and maybe Mitchell as well. Of course, if he's saving fuel, always easiest to save fuel when you're second, third, fourth in line, rather than when you're at the head of the field kind of dicing through the air. Uh, having those cars in front of you to break that air up really does do uh, do a lot on the fuel consumption. You see Mitchell once again just pull up right to the back of that number 71 car, but just going to cruise on that throttle, trim it out on the run down towards Indianapolis. We'll lift out a little early, give himself a nice big uh, run in towards Indianapolis and then through the left-hander as well. So really everyone working the fuel numbers at the moment, maybe even shifting into some of those lower fuel trims, trying to manage it with what we have here. Side by side, about mid-pack, that's Jason Harrison with Juan Manuel and Ramamelo Motorsport uh, going under the Toyota Bridge. Yeah, and uh, you can see in front there as well. Look out at Porsche, LMP1 team, lose the position. So down to 20th for them, asymmetric, moving up, James McRitchie behind the wheel of the number nine car into Arnage and through into 19th and Richie now has got two and a half seconds to catch up to the next car and uh, I don't think they're uh, going to give up on this one and uh, Volcano, Volcano trying to make that move back again ahead of Asymmetric heading into Porsche Curves and AR, AAR Blue are trying to get involved in this one as well as they head through Porsche Curves here and uh, Jason Harrison on the side of the car here. They get relatively close, but not touching the curb there through Porsche curves. Through the right and then the uh, the left at Karting Corner. Try and take a bit of the curb here. Not too much. You will get a slowdown penalty. That's one of the things that iRacing as a service does do. If you're new to iRacing, if you do cut the corner, then you will end up with a slowdown penalty and it will penalise you in the race here as uh, close action there between those two for 19th and 20th place now just feel you know, they're just slowing each other down a little bit because they're now 3.3 seconds ahead of speed asylum in 17th yeah that, that definitely is what that seemed like uh at the moment just maybe checking themselves up just a little bit there was a little bit of a defensive move from james mcritchie as well after that left hander at carding he just sort of pulled around the left along the left hand side of the racetrack to defend the inside from Danny Ramirez. Danny wasn't a big fan of that. That's why you saw the headlights flashing as they were on the brakes going in towards the Ford Chicane, but Danny behind all over the place as they come out of the corner to begin the run towards Tetra Rouge. Well held there by the driver of that number 19 car. And we're about 17 minutes in, Paul. The fuel is going to start to burn off a little bit. Tires going to be now pretty much up to temp, maybe feeling a little bit aware. If they are a little overworked, maybe feeling that. We do have a couple cars on pit road, and we talk about the fact with fuel strategy that you know you're probably going to have to do uh, a short fuel stint have a couple cars deciding to make that fuel that first short stop early as mitchell is harassing the pure racing team car for second doesn't seem like he seems keen on picking it up it's actually the team that paul and i cannot pronounce they inherit the second <laughs> spot yeah but uh carlos diegas 
doing a very good job here getting involved and staying with this and this is this is the thing we've, we've commentated so often on top split events and on, on the world championships and, and that this event here is actually giving an opportunity to some of those teams that you don't normally see on these broadcasted events it's giving them the opportunity to shine and right now that triple nine is doing exactly that sticking with these top teams that we see in the world championships week on week yeah, and it, it's really great to see. You saw that one moment of three three abreast. You see Mitchell De Jong pulling out of that one here with an hour and 40 minutes still left to go. I guarantee you when you get to the point that there's four minutes left to go in this race, Mitchell De Jong is not going to be afraid to stick it up the inside three abreast with his rallycross experience and the sort of racing he's done. Um, so this triple nine car going to get out at the head of the field. And, you know, if you're someone like Jonas Wolmeyer, that might be exactly what you want to just lose that second position. If this 999 car, we talk about the different sort of talent levels, maybe them not being up to speed. Maybe they're pushing a little bit harder, trying to work their way to the front of the field. Jonas is probably a OK, just slotting into third and giving himself a car just an out ahead of him to just slip stream off of and work the, uh, the fuel strategy game. Possible. So Vincent Lehervier in the 83 car has had an issue down at Mulzahn Corner. They're back up and running there, uh, but that has dropped them from 15th down to 22nd in this race. So a few teams finding um, finding issues and um, having problems in this race so far. Ooh, car round outside of Porsche curve. I think that was Daniel Eich in the motorless motorsport car. There's Julian Bell in graphite racing. There's another car involved there as well multiple cars this is at indianapolis as an oh another contact there um, this is just um well let's have a look back at this on the replay just try and find out what on earth has happened here around it seems like it may have started with julian bell and run in towards indiana oh he just gets loose at the uh, apex of the left hander the back end of the car just uh just steps out so not getting the turn in right he was he was a little to the center of the racetrack which is not what you want to do the, the part of the track there is crowned and it really does upset the car as you sort of go around but what caused the secondary incident i'm not really oh it's just another car yeah spun all by themselves so it's actually sort of two completely unrelated incidents john roberts in the boosted red car after that first incident he actually made the same exact mistake spun at the center of the corner again except he sort of where the first car that spun spun down to the inside wall and off the racing surface he uh he was spun around right at the track out point so disaster situation for them as your leaders work their way down the molson straight once again and we get some of the beautiful static shots you have here what car all over the place on the run through uh through tet rouge so that's uh that's not a place that's comfortable get to get loose ball no, it's certainly not. It's um, it's squeaky bum time, is what we'd say in the UK. Um, and uh, when you get like that, it's uh, it, it's it, it brings your heart rate up a little bit. Let's just say it that way. But um, here we are down the. Uh, you see the exit, the various lines that people are taking through Tet Rouge there as well. We're getting to see and see how some teams are maybe pushing that um, that. Uh, slow down penalty a bit more on the exit as we look on board with BMW Team Katang they're uh, under half a second now behind Impact Racing to 26 place are in at the moment they were up a little bit more but uh, obviously avoiding that incident down at Indianapolis has just caused them to drop back a couple of spots but uh, still 26 not a bad start for them at all and they're in the slipstream they're looking for positions here around them they definitely are. They're working right now on Thomas Grenier and Impact Racing as he's going to look to the inside, does filling, working down the middle stretch of the Mulsanne straight. So let's see if the move can come on the outside for the driver of that number 25 car. We know Phil has good pace. Six quickest in practice, just wasn't able to get a time in, and Thomas is going to give that one up on the braking zone in towards the chicane. I have to say, Paul, starting so deep down the field, I don't think it's going to be likely that we see Phil and Nicky be able to work the way to the head of the field. Oh. Do they get be able to go ahead? Uh, we've had a spinner, and that's the number 10, Leo Racing Team. Uh, and that's uh, Michelle uh, Sangil, uh, Sangili. And this is going to be a self-spin here at Mulzahn. So easy to do at this point as well. Carried too much speed through the corner and decided to get on the brakes rather than going into the wall. That's a very wise decision right there. 
Yeah, and he's gonna escape with some minor damage, but overall that 10 car should be all right. He'll lose a couple of spots, but other than that, be able to uh, cycle back out onto the racetrack. Side by side between Danny Ramirez and James McRitchie. That's asymmetric and Volcano, uh, the Volcano team as they run towards Indianapolis. And it's gonna be the number nine car who picks that spot up on the run in towards Indianapolis. So job done there. The AAR blue car we've kept an eye on, still watching that fight. We've sort of checked in on this fight a couple times already through the opening six or seven laps of this race. But James McRitchie, not a great run there out of Arnage. And that might open the door up for Danny. No, it doesn't seem like Ramirez seems too keen on getting too aggressive with it. But he's gonna work the slipstream, maybe hound him as they run up towards Porsche. Kers. He's gonna look to the left-hand side of the racetrack. That's definitely brave. And it looks like they're gonna stay single file as they work up through the S's. But he's gonna say, Paul, for that number 25 car, with them being the BMW factory drivers, do you think they get a, a factory driver provisional and get invited to all the same events the winners of this cost split get invited to? <laughs> um, uh, wow. If they ended up winning overall, first of all, that would be quite the achievement. Uh, and somehow I don't, I think there would be some sort of proviso and some terms of condition saying that BMW factory drivers can't win that. Seeing as they'll be there <laughs> as factory drivers. <laughs> but um, yeah, this battle here though, this has been great so far. All over 17th, 18th, 19th, and even 20th place all together. There's a couple others behind them as well, slowly gaining on them. So uh, all this battling is really, it's really good to see. It's not maybe the quickest way around this track, that's for sure, but everybody wants to gain those positions as much as possible here exactly and you talk about the fact that battling maybe not so great you can you can shuffle positions here and not lose much time if you really work together in the slipstream but it's not you don't do it by going side by side especially in at the braking zone it's basically just uh you know if, if you're a two-car pack around this place you know nose to tail you can find some speed just essentially leapfrogging off one another which is when you get to the long straight where the car in second just drafts up, swings around, takes that, that lead spot away. Then when you go down the next long straight, you just switch it back and forth, back and forth. You see that in all sorts of racing. A little bit later on today, you'll see that at the Indianapolis 500, I'm sure, especially cars at the head of line. This is a 61 of Jason Harrison is going to pick a spot up. Um, that's really the big uh, one of the big ways that these sorts of racetracks where you see high speeds and long straightaways to pick speed up is to leapfrog. You see it at Monza as well. Even the Nürburgring at times with some of the uh, lower tier cars you frequently see in the VLN in the 24 hours of the ring. So uh, it, it's good to see some of the fighting. You see some cars doing that, Paul, but you see a handful of these drivers really aggressive with each other in the first opening half hour of this race. While we're keeping an eye on this battle, and it has been an intense battle, I just want to mention that your race leader is now 12 seconds. 1-2, 12 seconds ahead of second place. That's, that is quite the starting stint. Are they, are they running a lighter fuel load, slightly lighter fuel load, realising that maybe they can't go the full hour? So try and get out in front, pull out the gap to make up for running that lighter fuel load start. You very well, that might be exactly what they're doing. If they're, if they're planning on making those two stops and not, you know, basically committing to the strategy early, it, it would make a lot of sense to send the, the car out there light and then really, really push trying to open that gap up early. Um, so there's definitely something that could be a play here for these guys. Normally you will just take the full fuel load, but like Paul kind of said there, if they're planning on committing to it, getting that extra couple tenths out of the car can be a, a good thing. We're still checking in with this fight, 17th on back. See the nine car of Jason McRitchie. He's still at the head of that line of cars. This is 61 though, who takes sort of second in line, 18th position currently overall, as they worked out of Indianapolis and now the run off of Arnage. So, you know, maybe that is what's coming into effect here just a little bit, Paul. I will say, what's the sort of delta we're expecting them to have to take um, in terms of a pit road sort of cycle? Because I don't think they're gonna be taking full, full tires and fuel either time they come down pit road but you have of course the full trip down the pit pit lane and then whatever you need in fuel they need probably after their first stop i'd say about a 40 second lead 50 second lead i think to make this work uh it, it's 
It, it's, it's a good question, is that? I mean, some of the cars... Well, of course, get an idea road. once we have the pit stop. Yeah, I mean, some of the cars that have been on pit road are already, okay, some of them... I'm using SRT eSports as an example. They were they were stopped for 11.6 seconds. It took 43.4 seconds to go cone to cone. So uh, that just gives an example of how long it does take to go down this pit lane. So you're looking at around about, I don't know, about a minute, minute and ten. Cone to cone, perhaps. You do you do gain a little bit on pit entry, uh, with it just being a little bit shorter on terms of the track. But... Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's all going to be about how we go with those, uh, these first pit stops and see how we go. The sun is rising here, by the way. Uh, it's looking a nice golden colour is the uh, the sky. You can see it there shining off the, uh, the adverts there. Not so much on pit road, uh, but uh, it is rising here at Le Mans. The uh, dynamic skies and dynamic weather coming into effect here. Uh, on uh, this uh, event here on the Iris Esports Network at Le Mans, the BMW 120 at Le Mans event. It's uh, been a good, exciting start to this one. Your leader 13.1 seconds ahead of the battle for second place, but uh, we'll keep an eye on the action that's further down the field as well, because there is plenty of action further down the field. And really, I've, there's some people are. Uh, battling and still being a bit overly keen here whereas some appear to have just settled into that right let's get fuel saving let's uh, start looking after the tires as well because i would imagine that you're going to double stick these tires here it's going to be something i think you consider i think if you're i think if you're going to just do it on one stop paul you might consider taking tires but at the same time, I think, especially for some of these guys at the head of the field, if you're like the pure racing team of Toyota Simsport, you know, any of those guys who really probably have a really good opportunity to win this race as we're looking at this fight as they work down the Molson straight, I, I think you're probably going to double stint just, if anything, to cut the, off the advantage for that way of eSports. Because I feel like you know, it's typically an extra, what, 30 seconds to, to take tires onto the car. It's about 30 seconds to fill the thing up. Um, you're not going to want to just give that Williams Esports car that extra 30 seconds out at the head of the field. No, he's certainly not. As we look at the uh, the top eight here, at the bottom of your screen, 20 and a half seconds covering the top eight there. Uh, and only Chris, second from eighth is close, though, as well. You, yeah. You take that 13-second gap between your top two. That's only a seven-second gap between seven cars. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's quite the close race there at the front. As we see that gaggle of five cars all together. And then the other two just coming through here a couple of seconds later. But uh, yeah, these uh, these drivers. Do you feel with this, uh, with Carlos Diegues, maybe a little bit of inexperience just staying out in the front? And that experience of teams like Pure Racing Team, if you ask on the Simsport and Sorg Rensport as well, just sitting behind. Do you think that's a little bit of inexperience from them just pushing the way to the front and then being set out there at the front? Could well be, but they did have good pace in qualifying. They weren't exactly yeah. that far off the mark. Um, only about six tenths in qualifying between the, the third and fourth place qualifiers of Quanda Sinsport and this triple line machine. So it's not like they're that far off the pace. And we'll have a listen to them and we'll have a, a, a watch of the revs as they work their way down in towards the first chicane. Um, if they're fuel saving, then that, ba that basically means they're pretty much on the mark. And we saw that pure racing team car, remember, for several laps at the head of the field still uh, still fuel saving. But this triple nine car is the one we need to keep an eye on and uh, about whether or not they're doing the fuel save game or if they're just really pushing the car as hard as they can. We'll find out in just a couple of moments when they get uh, to the end of this first stretch of the Molson straight um, about what's going on and what they're doing here. You'll see that, uh, that blue and white car just pull up a little bit on the car leading the train, of course, due to the slip stream. You will always be asking for full power down the straights, even if you're saving fuel. We lift out a little bit early, and let's see what this triple nine does. 200 Barker gone. Doesn't seem like there's any fuel save coming from that triple nine car at the head of this sort of leading pack, I'll argue. Um, so different strategies coming from your second place car compared to those on behind as PRT and uh, Coanda both seem keen on the fuel system. 
We have got a number of cars on pit road, by the way. AAR Blue that we saw involved in that battle for 17th. They're on pit road for the moment. Uh, a few others as well. Uh, Team Andreas Espinosa and uh, Schubert, uh, Schubert Motorsport VVLN2 as well. They're just coming up pit road now. So uh, we're seeing a number of cars already on pit road. Taking fuel and time. Just fuel. Yeah, just fuel it looks like at the moment. So uh, we'll see how the uh, strategies come out to play. They could be teams that are working definitely to a two uh, two stop pit stops here. As uh, uh, down into Mulzan once again. These drivers, they're all just going to sit as they are now. They're, they're, they're comfortable. They're in a position where they're, they're doing fuel saving. They're getting that slipstream and uh, making it work for them. And that's exactly what we're seeing here as they go down the mall zone straight. Then uh, further back, teams just all spreading out a little bit now. There's, uh, there's, there's some big battle packs of all just sort of split up now. Drivers, as I mentioned, getting into the swing of things here. And uh, this is what we'll see now. Probably until the first pit stops, Randy. You'll see towards the end of the uh, the stint that some teams that have been fuel saving will start pushing towards the end of the fuel fuel stint. Yeah, you you'll see oftentimes once you hit that fuel number, they'll sort of get let loose a little bit. I will say one fight this close, 14th on back, as we actually look at 21st and 22nd as well. But 14th is wheel to wheel as they head down in towards. Of Indianapolis, Eric Smith along. You actually take that back, Christian Steiderberger around the outside of Eric Smith. So that's going to see LFO Racing pick a spot up on the V Apex Racing Group Gold Car. So a good move there on the run down into the quick right hander uh, as Speed Asylum just sort of settles in behind, not really getting overly aggressive here. But you're absolutely right, Paul. Uh, on that front is, uh, you know, these guys once they get a little bit later into the stint, say, okay, you've hit your fuel number, you. you we have some excess you can let loose for a couple of laps you're going to see the lap times probably tick up just a little bit we also need to keep an eye on who will actually be the sort of second drivers getting into those yeah. cars as this event works its well way through looking at the third place running car of vrs train of Simsport, drivers i see new have connected to that car on the server since the start of the race are mitchell de jong josh rogers phil philip stam pash gurgis and ricardo pastorleto I see the three, the three likely drivers to get in there are Rogers, Gurgis, and Leda. Uh, Rogers would be, I think, the quickest option to hop yeah. in there, but not necessarily a guarantee because uh, Passion or, or excuse me, Josh and Ricardo currently not connected to the server, so that is important. Uh, it's worth pointing out that the uh, BMW Katang team, number 25 up to 21st now, they just overtook the uh, XCM Anatolia. Red car, they've uh, got up there. So Philip Eng now making his way through the field up to 21st. And considering that they started 43rd, that's, uh, that's good going so far. Their next target will be the Romello uh, Motorsport car of uh, Juan Manuel uh, Becci. And that's going to be uh, for 20th place. So if they can break into the top 20 in the next sort of 10 minutes or so, they're, they're in line for potential getting a really good result here as a team one thing i will say though they are they are factory works bmw drivers but they will be absolutely kicking themselves that they didn't set a qualifying time weren't they well i mean they're racing drivers and racing yeah. drivers uh, i think maybe only second to doctors and how competitive they <laughs> can be but uh you're absolutely right they'll be they'll be kicking themselves but it might be good practice for them before they end up working their way out to france for the real race because you know, of course, to, with this event, Paul, you don't have a uh, prototype cycling through all the time. And certainly, uh, well, I guess you could say there's amateur level GT cars in here with the pace of, that some of the, the teams have, not throwing shade at all. But, I mean, it really it, it, it really is sort of, uh, you know, you're seeing a bit of a GT Pro and GT sort of aspect, I think, of this race when you look to the head of the field and yeah. sort of beyond down past the impact. So it's actually, I think, going to be good practice for these guys just dealing with all the traffic out there on track, even if there's no... Uh, LMP cars that are like 80 mile an hour quicker due to the downforce to uh, force the curve. I, I mean, uh, I will point out that you look at the fastest lap for the leader, 45-0. Nobody's been anywhere near that, by the way, not even that second group. 
Uh, you look further down, though, in the teams that are in the 20, you know, position 20s and, and down, you're talking about a five-second difference in fastest laps. I mean, that's that's showing that the, the level of speed that, that that leading team has, I mean, they're a second and a half quicker on the fastest lap than the, uh, the next pack uh, uh, behind them, from second down to fifth. So, well, fifth, second down to sixth, sorry. Uh, so, definitely, they've got the, uh, they've got the pace of Williams Eastport. By the way, LFO Racing, they're involved with catching up to a battle between Speed Asylum and VAPEX Racing Group Gold. And it was actually VAPEX Racing Group that gained a position on uh, the Speed Asylum. So, Richard Gafenko losing a place to Eric Smith there. And uh, yeah, they're uh, they're in and around that sort of, sort of positions there, and um, they're all sort of swapping positions. But being in that 14th place, that's still a really good position, considering we had 48 cars take the uh, take the start here. By the way, four official retirements as well from this event. So 44 cars still running here around the mall, which is a which is a good number for this event. Yeah, I think you're right about that one for sure. Um, and you see that 39 car. We've seen this pack a couple times already. Just saw them shuffle uh, spots around just a couple of moments ago. Um, actually, as well as a few laps ago when we were checking in with them. So, But you're right, only four retirements. And you know that tells me we haven't had too many big incidents, uh, only a couple. And uh, it's good to see there to, to get through really 40 minutes of this thin. And especially with the, the temp starting to come up, Paul, you talk about the fact that the weather is going to, or excuse me, that the sun was coming up and really illuminating the race circuit is Team Cheese and Wine, and Clive Lawrence is currently coming down on towards Pitt Road. I don't see any damage on that car, so that very well might be a scheduled stop there from that BMW. But uh, it, you not only have, of course, if the sun comes up, you're going to see that tra track temp uh, start rising just a little bit. And as memory serves, some of the endurance races and the full 24-hour races we broadcast here, we, of course, have done the... Uh, official one as we take a look at second and third in line at the moment as they work their way in towards the first chicane some of the 24-hour races this is generally the phase of the race where we often start seeing some issues at least this phase of the race in terms of where the sun is in the sim yeah. of course with a 24-hour race you're talking your you're 16 17 hours into the event at that point a lot more rubber build up but that's you know the track temp starts coming up the track starts slicking off just a little bit at this point um, and you'll often see some cell spins. Be interesting to see if that's a, an aspect here through this next 20 to 30 minutes. Granted, we did have a lot of sort of cell spins about 15 minutes ago, and it's really calmed down in that aspect the last 10 or 15 minutes. But this is really the sort of phase where drivers will off, often struggle on the sim uh, with these current lighting and weather conditions. Yeah, they, they do. And the, the, the current track temperature, I could tell you, is 18 degrees Celsius. Um, and that is a really cold track temperature. So some of the teams will have been caught out by the, the temperature on the track in the opening stages of the race. I think it's partly a contribution as to what happened uh, with those spins at the start of the event. But this is why I think that a, um, a double stint in tyres will work around here because you've not got that many corners that cause a massive stress to the tyre. I mean, really, the only ones that I can think of is through Porsche curves and on the entry to Indianapolis, which we're just seeing right now. Yes, you've got the hard braking zones, but then you've got the long straights where you stretch your legs in the car, and that generally cools down, you know, lets the tyres just relax and cool down a bit as well. So I do think that tyre wear really isn't an issue through here, especially with the conditions that we've got now, and that would make double sitting tyres a real possibility here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it is a, a classic thing here at Le Mans to be able to double and maybe even triple stint the tires. Because like you said, there's it's not just that there's not a lot of crazy corners that overstress the tire. There's just flat out not a lot of corners here for the distance of the racetrack. Yeah. I mean, I remember when the track came out, Paul, I think you and I may have done one of the first broadcasts we ever did. And uh, certainly I think we did one of the first endurance broadcasts we ever did around this place. At least a leg of it. And we spent basically the entire leg. Oh, actually, watch the lead car in the second group. Uh, the triple nine, a little bit wide on exit of Porsche curves. May have a slowdown penalty to serve. So be interesting to see here. And as that pure racing team car pulls to the left into the Ford chicane, 
Triple nine does not seem up to pace. So the exit of the Ford Chicane, do they pull over the driver's right to nope. serve the slow down? No, but he's slow off that final corner. And that's going to allow Pure Racing Team, Mitchell DeYoung in the, from VRS, everyone to cycle through. So a slow down coming from that triple nine car. And that is relevant because we haven't really talked about it yet, Paul. The fact that that triple nine car was at the head of that second pack and not saving gas whereas uh, the 71 car was easily saving gas. That was just fuel, uh, easy fuel save for the 71 <laughs> driver of Jonas Wolmar. Now they're playing games with one another. Jonas wants to slot second in line, and he's going to let Mitchell take that second position and lead this train around as they work their way onto Mulsanne. I'm going to uh, butcher a famous James Hunt quote uh, and adapt it for this situation. We've got the ridiculous situation of where nobody wants to be at the head of this group. Uh, that's what we've got right here. So Mitchell has bit the bullet and he's going for it now at the front of that group. The triple nine fell down to fifth place and not all the way to the back of this, uh, this gaggle of cars. But that will actually help them here a little bit as they're about to gonna get to another place drop back and that's Agent K with uh, Jared Corone moving up in front of them. There, that's the ex, uh, ex race sports driver, isn't it, Jared? Um, in the Agent K, drive, uh, Agent K car as they uh, run through the first of the uh, Mulzahn chicanes. Now, it's at this point, Randy, where I, uh, I will ask you the question, do I use the overused fact about the Mulzahn straight or do I save that for next week when we've got the full 24 hours on the line? Is it, are, are you gonna say, compare it to a certain racetrack in terms of length? Yes. Well, yeah, I was about to say, you and I, we pounded the, f I was literally about to say it, that that back straightaway is as long as a lap of Sebring in terms of distance. There you go. I did it for you. Now you don't Thank have you. to. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's the overused race spot fact about Le Mans. Uh, <laughs> that gets used every year uh, in every event that we do around here. But it is relevant because you think Sebring, one of the... Um, the, the, the crown jewels of endurance racing, 12 hours of Sebring, that is considered a long track, isn't it? In, in terms of motorsport. Oh, actually, we've got an issue. Sorry, the number 14 car has had an issue at the second chicane down the Mulzahn. And that's the V Apex Racing Group Gold Cars. Another car actually coming off of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, escape road as well. So two cars having an issue down the Mulzahn and what's betting that both of these were involved somehow, Randy? Possibly as we take a look at the replay in towards the second chicane. Oh, he was just too deep on the brakes with that second car in line and that just causes the stack up and you see the, uh, the black and white car to say thank you for the free spot and just <laughs> basically uh, split the difference there as they worked their way through. So... Uh, Nice dodging of the incident there after the 14 car gets sent around. And you know that V Apex Racing Group car, they won't be happy with that, but that's not really a major contact there. They'll have a little bit of damage to the rear of the car, but you know, other than a few seconds loss and maybe some speed, maybe overcook the tires a little bit, that car should be more than okay and still out there circulating on track at a, at a relatively fine pace. Richard Gavenko will be a very happy driver with that one, gaining the, gaining the positions there. But yeah, it was the uh, asymmetric car, I believe. Oh, no, it wasn't. Oh, it's in fact, the 14 car and the 9 car have been involved in the incident. Oh, no. And this is down at Mulzahn. We're back to live pictures. You see them both pulling away. We'll get re No, this is at uh, Arnage, oh, no. sorry. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, the pictures here. And, uh, well, things are getting a little bit heated. And it was the, oh, the front car just spun. And around they all go up and V Apex Racing Group, the car that was in, that actually was involved in that one the second chicane, uh, maybe the heat that they haven't let the tires cool down enough. Oh no, they caught that curb. That's what it was. They caught the curb on the entry to Arnage and around they go. So uh, a nightmare lap, lap 12, they will not want to look back at. Yeah, normally it's lucky number 13 that people are always stressed out about, but I think this Virtual Apex Racing Group gold car it's going to be lap 12 that really haunts them. And, you know, that, that is a classic mistake to make, isn't it, Paul? You have an incident, and then, you know, within a lap, lap and a half, oh, we, you have we, another we, one. Oh, big yes. incident, yeah, behind. That's at the exit. That's at Carlton Corner. And it's a 023 car. That's the XCM anti anti lap. And, oh, they're going to make contact. Oh, dear. There was no room left there. And that was the uh, orange mechanic. 
Samantha got the better run out of, look at the speed that they've got there, and trying to go through, and yeah, that, that 023 car just doesn't seem to give the room there for the 27 to be down the inside. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's there, the thing is, though, that that's not really a corner you can ever go alongside. I'm curious, because the 023, it doesn't seem like they get a slowdown. They just don't get a good run out of karting, and it's just... It's one of those corners that you can sort of take side by side, but not really. If I was a 27 car, I think this close to, to pit stop, I probably wouldn't have slotted it up the inside there. But at the same time, if I'm the 023, knowing I got such a bad run, I wouldn't try and hold that car and pinch them like that on the inside. Because I know that whenever I get a bad run like that coming out of uh, the Porsche Curves, that car is always going to go for that move there. So definitely some aggression coming out. Um, from that uh from that spot uh as we're probably i'd say for fuel savers paul obviously you need to get this to an hour so we're about 12 minutes away from those who have been saving fuel likely are going to be going an extra lap maybe if you've been fuel saving hard which i will say has likely been happening considering the pace difference has been two seconds for fuel savers maybe an extra two laps around this place if you're not saving fuel you're probably a lap lap and a half away from coming down pit road i would wager as we look at the uh, Vertex Motorsport black car going down the Mulsar, getting the move on the orange mechanic car that we saw involved in that incident on the exit of Karting corner. Through the chicane, they go, the second chicane down the Mulsar, and back out again. So that was the uh, 21st position gained for that uh, Vertex Motorsport black car. They're heading down towards Mulsar corner, and there's Really, there's a couple of corners in this track that catches people out every time uh, in these sorts of events around this course. Mulzahn certainly is one of those because you're turning at the same time as braking. Uh, Arnaj is one that people seem to go a little bit too quick into and uh, end up hitting that wall on the outside. And uh, also the, the Fort Chicane can catch people out as well. Yeah, it definitely can. You also have, I mean, Porsche Curves is, I mean, as, as fast as the car is, as we're taking a peek at that number, uh, that 15th place running car, excuse me, of BMW Team Patang, who very well done by Philip. It's been a monster stint from him to go from 43rd up to 15th through the first hour of this race. Um, but, I mean, Porsche Curves can be a part of the racetrack. You can make mistakes at as well when you get a little bit deeper into the race. Although I would say as far as S's sections get, that's one of the, the more smoother ones that, I'm aware of in the world. Let's see if Phil comes under attack here from Danny Ramirez. Nope, that move's not going to come in. As now head towards Porsche Curve. You see Phil a little bit slower through the first part, but really carries the speed through that second corner rather well. Um, but you're right. It's really the slow corners here that people really tend to get wrong and not quite get right just because you have the car set up to work at high speed to try to get as much speed out of the car down the straights while still letting the car work through all the high speed sectors and you know, likes of Tetra Rouge and Porsche Curves, like I said, because of that, you do tend to have sort of a, a unique suspension setup on the car that you don't typically run at most racetracks. And that can make it a little bit odd to run. As you see Philip Bang really send it over the Ford Chicane there, doing his best impression from the, uh, the Porsche Super Cup we saw yesterday and those guys at Montreal. Yeah, and that's something that uh, you don't normally see with these uh, GT cars. Look at that, almost sending it over there. Great slow-mo shot there. It's not an ideal line, though, really, because it's pushed the car out wide into the gravel. But luckily, he, um, well, I say luckily, he's a, he's a professional racing driver. He, uh, he manages to keep it all going in the right direction and keeping it out of the gravel there. But... Um, Got a few more cars on pit road, Asymmetric and Vertex Motorsport Black, so they're making pit stops now. So we're heading towards, as you mentioned, that pit stop phase of the race. And this is where we'll start to see how these strategies work. And the thing is, if they're coming down pit road now to get their fuel stop, that does basically put them in for a second pit stop in this race. So uh, two stops happening here. Interested to see what happens with Williams Esport out the front. By the way, just 23.3 seconds ahead. Casually, but of course it is, it's a little bit deceiving, of course, with the fuel strategy working here. You know, them being really the lead car that's really pushing it here with the, uh, 
the pace, the other cars that we normally expect to see on pace with them, the likes of Mitchell, the likes of Jonas Wolmeyer. You know, I will say on any given weekend, as long as they're on the same strategy, you won't see a two second per lap difference between these top three. So it is it is 100% a fuel strategy situation at the moment. And it is really wondering when Lauren Heinrich comes down pit road because him going full send through this first hour, we're expecting him to come down pit road first. The question's got to be, though, uh, is how much fuel can you save and how many extra laps can you get in the tank? Because it is a difficult track to save fuel around, Paul, because it is, it is so long and you spend so much time with your right foot absolutely planted to the floor that it can be a difficult place to really open up an extra lap of fuel on. God forbid even an, a second lap of fuel can be uh, really difficult to save around here. If, if you want to make it to the hour, you really want to be doing two more laps here on fuel. That's what you want to be doing to be able to And that's get, even tight. Yeah, uh, to be able to get here. And Lauren Heinrich's coming up to pit road to your race leader. As we expected, he's been pushing hard. He's on to pit road here. So, two-stop strategy potentially at play here for Williams Esports. So are they just going to take a shorter pit stop here and push the car hard? Or are they taking a full tank and go for a splash and dash at the end? We will have to wait and see for this one. That second group though now, they're coming through. One of those cars coming on is the triple nine, the car that was at the front of that group for so long. They're pitting as well. We've got an hour and seven minutes remaining in this race. All of a sudden, this race is coming alive here. And now we get to see what the strategies are at play here, Andy. And you're right. And like we said, we talked about the fact that going extra two laps to get to the hour, that's going to be a big ask for Mitchell DeYoung and everyone else in line. That's going to be a 16 lap stint, which normally you typically see 14 to 15. So for Mitchell and for Jonas behind, Christopher uh, Dambiets in the sword car, as well as Jawad Caroni in the Agent K machine, you know, they, they need to get around these two more, this, an extra two times to get to that one hour mark. Because if you come down pit road here with an hour and three minutes left to go in this race, you know, you're going to spend a minute, minute and a half on pit road. You'll come out with about an hour and one minutes left uh, here in about a lap's time. You, you're not going to be able to make it on the, on the single stint. They would have essentially just gotten the strategy all sorts of wrong. So as we keep an eye on your race leading car, who's already out of pit road, by the way, 18.3 second stop that's going to be fuel only and i think light on the fuel yep. and a 49.4 uh delta through the pit lane now interestingly the, the triple nine car is out and away 32.9 seconds for their pit stop they did change driver as well so minute and five is the delta down cone to cone on the pit that lane. Would have been full full fuel no tires yeah so uh, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be a splash and dash for them at the end, I would imagine. But Lauren Heinrich staying behind the wheel of the car for that Williams Esports car has committed them to a two-stop strategy uh, with them because it is a team event. You have to have a minimum of two drivers in this one. And we've got a pit party going on at the moment. Multiple cars down pit road and uh, they're all getting their first pit stops out the way so uh, so uh, interesting strategies at play here we've seen some of the cars that had early pit stops as well getting involved in the mix here and srt esports for example they pitted very early in this race i mean they are 10 laps into their stint now they're up in 12th place at the moment here so uh, they had their short pit stops short pit stop early in this one so you would imagine that after the hour mark, they're going to come in and get the uh, full fuel uh, and uh, get that out, back out and away. The drivers of the number 25 came down pit road and have swapped as well. The BMW Team Katang car. So Nikki Katzberg behind the wheel of that number 25 car. Oh Phil dear, Ang, look at that. His job is done. Yeah, huge train of cars. <laughs> and he was actually wide through the Dunlop chicane. Through, so, uh, they're three abreast behind. Danny Ramirez in the Volcano car working the middle. Arnaud Razio and RFRO working the right-hand side. Now they find themselves two by two. So Mickey Katzberg, after missing the Dunlop chicane, is probably very happy he got a good run through Tetra Rouge and is not part of that little uh, gathering of cars behind him. Yeah, certainly is. Away he goes out down the Mozart, but he's got a whole queue of traffic behind him here. He's got, what, five cars behind him in that queue. So uh, 
It's not ideal if you're trying to save fuel at the front of that queue and they're still going too wide. They're still trying to sort each other out as, um, yeah, those going three wide down into the second chicane. That's, um, it's all sorted itself out, so that's good. Just to keep an eye on your leaders, by the way, Kowanda, they stay out. Pure Racing Team, they stay out. Sorg Rinsport and Agent K, they're on to pit road. So they could only go one extra lap here as we look at that. Three wide down the Mulzahn straight. Wow, two by two now, Randy. This, uh, surely this is going to end in tears at some point. Maybe just a little bit as they work themselves in towards Mulsanne as we're trying to keep focus on two completely opposite ends of the racetrack, the Mulsanne corner and the front straightaway. See the two orange cars. One of them pulls out of the slipstream working down this stretch. That's Nick Benedict working on Danny Ramirez in the Mook Motorsport Sim Racing car. So the Mook Motorsport machine and Neil Benedict picks that spot up on the run down towards Indianapolis. And by the way, Renee Menqui in the Schubert Motorsport number two car already reeling in Nikki Katzberg and Arnaud Rousseau is, I believe, gotten around Nikki Katzberg. So moves getting made up there through about the middle part of the lap as the 25 car just a bit of a wiggle at the apex of Indianapolis, but Nikki able to hold on to that. Um, as the, I will say the pit stop sort of cycles and strategy at the head of the field from AGK and Ford Rensport are going to make this a really interesting race to watch because they need to find some way to stretch an extra two laps out of this second stint that I don't think they're going to be able to do. Oh, and by the way, Pure Racing Team all over the back of Mitchell. I think Mitchell has really kicked it into fuel save mode down this trip of the Mulsan. Yeah, I, I've, both of them side by side, flashing headlights. As <laughs> neither of them wants the lead at the moment, and uh, Pure Racing Team are just going to slot in behind, and uh, Mitchell is not going to get that slip straight that he would have liked to have had just to get that little extra bit of fuel out of the car there as they come through the second chicane once again down the Mulzahn. So we're going to be hitting the hour mark very shortly indeed. We've got more cars down pit road making their pit stops and uh, we'll be able to give you some sort of uh, rundown once all the pit stops have been done i think it's only actually uh let's have a look on the, the two at the front the oh it's mitchell de Jong misses oh. his braking runs really wide there and uh, <laughs> Jonas volmeyer almost followed him off there yeah, that's a little bit of an interesting mistake there from Mitchell. One of the, you know, we talked about the slower corners catching people out. You know, and these guys are so, I think, focused on the fuel trying to make this work. Maybe Mitchell going a little bit wide. I will also say it's interesting that Pure Racing Team car who's fuel saving as hard as they are. Uh, see Mitchell goes that wide off the racetrack. 99.999% of the time you see that Pure Racing Team car pick that spot up. This time they're like, no, nah, we'll still take second place. It's okay. But uh, th these guys need to be careful playing these sort of games because they are costing each other time with the big lists and the couple of the breaking zones and, of course, Mitchell's mistake at Mulsanne. You know, you don't want to just give it to Williams on a silver platter. You're trying to pressure them with the fuel strategy. The other thing to note as well, Paul, both of these teams have gotten themselves into a very good situation because we now tick at the halfway mark now. They will have less of this race to work with the second stint than they did with this first one. So it's going to be an easier second, let's say 15 some odd laps that they have to do this next trip through because of course they're going to have what the next couple minutes they're about to spend on pit road. It's only 57 minutes you have to stretch to the end rather than a full hour. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be uh, really interesting to play out. So we expect these two onto pit road this time by and here they come down onto the pit road. So question is is this going to be the winning strategy or is that Williams strategy of two stopping going to work out for them because Williams they're coming round now heading in towards the Ford chicane in fact they're going through the Ford chicane right now and uh, they're going to take that lead back once again so um, they took that short pit stop did Williams Esport it was 14 uh, 18.3 seconds was their fuel stop so it wasn't the full tank whereas these two they're going to be taking a full tank right now as they uh, hit their marks on pit road change of drivers they're having to do it so Dominic Farber getting in for pure racing team and oh just the uh, VRS GT World Championship uh, leader 
Joshua Rogers jumping in. Just well, wait a, a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Lauren Heinrich didn't get out of the Williams car. No, they're because they're committed to the two. Oh, right, strategy. right, right. That's right. Yes. Get with the game, Randy. <laughs> actually, no, that's that's actually very relevant because this may actually be a bad pit stop call for, and pit strategy call for them because it's going to be a longer serves, stop. Yeah. Well, right, right. If memory serves, it takes, what is it, 25 seconds or is it 30 about seconds? About 30 seconds. In, 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 about 30 seconds. So I would have thought that you would have wanted to get the fuel, the long stop out of the way now rather it's than still, later on. It's still going to be a relatively long fuel stop, though, is that second stop and they're going to be uh, because it was only what a half tank call it they're going to be still about three quarters of an hour maybe four, no, about 40 40 yeah about 40 minutes remaining in the race so they've still got quite a decent time and i think they will be able to work it that one as well the uh, the pit stops have sorted themselves out and look at that uh vrs quinn and simsport come out in second place Crucially, 47 seconds behind the race leader. And the last time the race leader came down the pit lane, it was 49 seconds, cone to cone. And that was for the short stop. The next stop is going to be longer, so they, Williams Esports, need to pull out that gap that bit more. You're absolutely right. And, and keep in mind, it was 49 seconds, and we're expecting an extra 12 seconds that they're going to have to spend in the lane for the second stop. So you're likely going to be looking at about a pretty much bang on a minute trip down the pit stop sequence. And like we said, this is a one lap shorter second stint for these guys that just made their pit stops and are doing the one stop strategy. So they're not going to have to save fuel nearly as hard. That means you're going to be able to push a little bit harder. So that William D Sports car, I know that, you know, I've, I've, I've been sort of active with this with the chat inside of the server a couple of big name drivers are saying that williams has his in the bag i'm not nearly as convinced and no. i think this is very very tight for williams it's going to be a close battle that's for sure it's going to be neck and neck and look at this josh rogers trying to break the slipstream as they go down the molzan he's been weaving getting himself to the middle of the road and uh well worth pointing out to people here most of these roads are public highways here so they've got a crown in the road that means it's got a uh, it's got a, a a curve in the road uh, surface that means that the middle of the road is higher than the left and right hand side it's to help with drainage uh, when they know normal roads what that does mean is if you get your car here down the middle of the road you're actually getting the car the bottom of the car closer to the road that gives you a little bit of extra speed because it's actually working your aerodynamics that little bit better here right now. yeah so you will see these guys they'll pull right over the, the the middle of the racetrack down the straightaways that can make things actually very stressful and we've seen that in the 24 hours here yeah and the gt cars uh uh, try to run the center of the racetrack and you have prototype cycling through going absolutely sandic speed so uh it's it, it is an interesting thing with the crown or the interesting thing with the crown of the road and of course not even just down the straights we talk about it on the run in towards some of these braking zones the braking zones in the in the chicane you're of course well in the chicanes going down the Mulsan. you're of course you're crossing the count the crown of the road as you turn into the corners and i think the most notable one at least for me having driven laps around this place the run through indianapolis you know you, you come in you cross the crown of the, of the road at 100 50 160 miles an hour whatever it might be and then you need to keep it to the right hand side for the braking zone because trying to brake on the crown of the road as you try to get the car slowed down into that left hander is very very difficult as dominic farber who's now in the pure racing team blue car all over the back the 101 of luis uh, glania well here we are then we're uh, over the halfway point of this race so why don't we give you a bit of race Bot tv fan immersion we're going to do this on board with agent k joe Caroni behind the wheel as he'll take you around this magnificent circuit you're watching the rac sports network and let's give you race Bot tv fan immersion
There you go. That is Racebook TV fan immersion on board the Agent K car of Jared Corona. And, uh, well, you are watching this on the Irish Esports Network. Coverage brought to you by Racebot TV. It is the BMW 120 at Le Mans event here on this fine Sunday afternoon if you are in the UK or Europe, if you're in the States. And it's, well, it's a nice morning for everyone. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, it's been an interesting race so far. And one thing that we've noted, Rande, is that one... Uh, the VRS Quanta Simspot car has pulled out a gap on the Pure Racing Team Blue car. However, they've not really been keeping a, a good pace here. Yeah, that's actually going to be a problem with them. So they're, they've, they've sensed the driver swaps. Of course, Josh Rogers, who's basically the hottest commodity on iRacing right now for road racing, um, uh, especially in GT cars. He's blitzed away from that sort of second pack of Pure Racing Team and Agent K by about four seconds, but last trip around the racetrack, did a 3.46.9, you compare that to Lauren Heinrich, who, of course, not saving fuel with a light car, three minutes, 45.45. The gap is basically right at 50 seconds. So I'm thinking this race likely to go 30, 31 laps, depending on, you know, just based on what we saw, these guys made it to an hour and then went an extra trip around. I don't think we'll go the full 32 laps. Although one driver I know is at least expecting that. I will keep that information uh, private, though, about who's <laughs> thinking that it might go that distance. But um, it's uh, I don't think we're going to quite stretch that far. I think we'll likely be a lap earlier than that. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this eight car. We need to see this pace equalize because right now, Josh is sort of in the window that he needs to be in order to maintain this pace and pick up this spot. I will say the other thing we need to keep in mind, Paul, is not just the advantage that Quanta needs to have to be able to come out with the lead after that Williams car pits again. He needs to be able to maintain pace to even be able to hold on to the lead. So there may yeah. be just a, a, a raceability advantage here for this Williams eSports car and Lauren, he Lauren Heinrich and his teammate of Alexander Voss, who is likely going to be getting into that car when he comes down pit road. He's going to have the advantage of they're, they're not going to be that far back down the order, even if uh, this VRS car can equalize the pace. And they're going to have a quicker race car, a racier race car, and they should be good on fuel as that trip through another two seconds opened up for Williams. So Coanda needs to find some speed here. I'm surprised that they're this far off, considering that you're, you're basically a full lap less. He's basically matching the pace Mitchell was in terms of fuel save, but it's a full three minute shorter stretch of the hour here through this last stint. So a bit shocking to still see the pace this far down. But, and here's my counter to that, do you save that little bit more fuel now at this point here so that when Williams' spot do pit and if you it, make sure you're in that window to take the lead, does it give you that little bit of extra fuel that you can then push towards the end when you need to? Maybe save a little bit extra, but I don't mm. think you save too much. I think you need, to, you need to really apply the pressure to Williams here because if you oversave at this point, you sort of put them in a in a in a situation in the that they can just yeah they can just sort of push it super hard and even with with Williams situation they're in right now they can sort of afford to come down pit road and take an extra couple seconds worth of gas get that extra gallon extra gallon and a half maybe extra two into the car get Alex out and then really be able to push and not even have to look at that fuel gauge or that consumption per lap that would be the disaster for the two car of Williams Esports to come down pit road try to push it to the absolute limit on fuel and then end up coming out, you know, and maybe with the lead, but having to come back down pit road for a little bit of a splash and dash. So things are still tight here for these guys for sure. And if I'm Williams Esports, I push as hard as I can. And if I'm a Coanda, I'm maybe starting to think about my strategy because I was really expecting the pace to be picked up through the second stint. It just hasn't. Well, while we've been discussing that, we have been keeping an eye on that battle for third place between Pure Racing Team Blue Agent K and Sorg Rensport Esports. They have dropped the uh, triple nine car of that uh, Estre Madura e, uh, Ribes... Uh, oh, goodness. Uh, uh, Ribes... <laughs> uh, Jose Lobo behind the wheel of that one in the triple nine. They have put in a really good show in here, though, so far, to be fair to them and to be uh, within uh, what uh, let's call it about 
uh, four, and a, four and a bit, five seconds of Pure Racing Team Blue, who are a world championship team. You know, that, that this is really good going, a really good showing from that team there. Yeah, it's been a good run from the, the uh, I believe, Spanish team there um, from Club Iber Iberica. But you are right. It will say one thing to keep an eye on. It's actually Agent K. Good run on Pure Racing Team. Dominic Farber, not a good run through Indianapolis. So the 13 car will pick that spot up on the run towards Arnaz. So move Dewad Caroni up into that second position. I will say there is not a second driver for that Agent K machine. So Dewad Caroni just doing it all by himself. I have a feeling Agent K stands for Agent Caroni. So he's just soloing <laughs> this one, and he's got himself up into the third position. So he's not in for any prizes here, of course, not running as a team, but likely just out here having some fun with some top-level competition. I will say, got to remember, Paul, that uh, Drouad, and if memory serves, Luis Glana in the Sword Rensports Esports number 101 just behind, they came down pit road one lap earlier yep. than Pure Racing Team and VRS Coen of Sin Sports. So that means they're going to have to somehow stretch the extra lap here that those two don't have to worry about. Yep, they certainly do. Uh, just uh, quickly uh, looking through uh, your field then. So it is Williams Esports who lead this one 54 seconds ahead of uh, VRS Sim Simsport in second place. Agent K third with Pure Racing Team Blue in fourth. So Rensport Esports in fifth. And then the uh, the triple nine cap of that uh, Estre Madura E Ribetisha. Uh, Oh my goodness, I, I tell you what, I do apologise <laughs> to all of our Spanish viewers here uh, for my terrible butchering. Uh, to be fair though, I butcher the English language as well, so uh, it's only fair. Um, HR Racing 7th with William Jimmy Sports in 8th, and looking at the positions gained there, you look at that in the top 12, you've got the uh, Solar Green Sport Esports team, uh, uh, done well. HR Racing up six positions so far. Leo Racing Team and Speed Asylum at 10th and 11th, gaining four positions as well. But it's worth pointing out if we change that page onto the next one, you'll see a big mover, and that's a 25 car. Look at that 28 positions for BMW Team Katang. They're in 14th at the moment. They're currently dragging along with them the Ramella Autosport car in uh, 15th place so uh, even bigger movers though are the 17th and 19th position teams as well 29 spots for each of those are the uh, Volcano Porsche LMP1 team and the SRT eSports team so uh, uh, no SRT uh, 19th it was the uh, Just Point uh, team. Motorsport who's up 30th at the moment yeah so uh, some big moves in this field so yeah, definitely been really interested to see how uh, how this one's going on. But um, although a lot of eyes are on the uh, Team BMW Katang uh, team, and I do want to say uh, hello to the uh, BMW Motorsport Twitter team because they've been uh, basically promoting this race all the way through this event so far. So hello to them. Uh, it's nice to have you along for this race, along with everybody else watching this one. No, 12th position, Motef Project Black. That is Stephen Kempson behind the wheel, ahead of the Speed Asylum, which is Luke Cross. Uh, or is it Luke Kraus, uh, I would actually say, for that one, in the 39 car. So that's 12th and 13th. They're currently... Uh, Doing a little bit of a slipstream battle here, Andy. Yeah, a little bit of a drafting fight here as drivers continue to sort of log laps here. Most of our battles have really spread themselves out, though. As you see them now heading down in towards the second chicane at the Molson, and just a little bit of an advantage there for that lead car. So not coming under uh, any uh, assault whatsoever. I, I do have to ask, ask though, Paul, with the... Oh, lead are in. Oh, yeah, Lauren Heinrich down on towards Pitt Road. So this minutes. is important. Yep, this is 40 minutes, more or less of a full stop. Alex Voss, we know getting behind the wheel of this car. Now, how long will they spend on Pitt Road? And will Coanda have the race lead? And if so, by how much? Well, this is it. So, wow, my maths, my mental arithmetic worked there. 40 minutes on the dot for them to come down onto pit road. Here's the, the uh, second place man coming through Porsche curves, through karting curve now, and uh, heading towards the Porsche K. 
Lee Death just waiting patiently on pit road. The uh, the time ticking by. 20 seconds stopped for them on the pit lane. Through the four chicane comes Joshua Rogers, and out he goes up to speed. And uh, oh, Lauren Heinrich, uh, not Lauren Heinrich, sorry, Andrew uh, Alexander Voss now pulling out the pit road. Here comes the Coanda car, the side by side. Coanda take the lead, but crucially, look at where that Williams Esports car is right behind the Coanda car. That's exactly where they wanted to be, Randy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much a great situation here because we know that Josh Rogers struggling on the fuel. Last trip around the racetrack, a 47.1. Lauren Heinrich's last hot lap before he came down pit road, a 45.3. So the, the extra fuel advantage is going to really play out here in terms of Williams. The strategy and the fuel numbers just have not worked their way into Coanda's favor as they now have Alexander Voss and that Williams Esports car cycling into the race lead. One has to wonder, though, Paul, Lauren, I think, is going to, or excuse me, Alex is going to pick the lead up here. We know Williams is likely going to inherit this lead here, which should give Josh a little bit of slipstream. How much is that going to help that Coanda car with here the fuel goes. save? You see the move there. That's Josh on the fuel save. Easily job done. Doesn't fight it whatsoever. Now, can Josh equalize the pace that he has a little bit of draft to work with? Well, this is the question. Look at the run he got out of the uh, first chicane there. And he's right up under the gearbox of that uh, of that uh, BMW M8, and uh, Williams Esport now to the head of the field once again. And uh, this is where that strategy play is going to come through. You do imagine the uh, the third place car is seven seconds, call it, behind these two. So these two on the road at the moment. They've got no one behind trying to get their slipstream as well. So these two can battle it out. And it's great to say, uh, I know Williams Esports haven't had, always had the best of times in the World Championships uh, this season. So it's great to see them up at the front of this event. But Josh is hounding them using that slipstream. And it, but it is key here that he holds on to that slipstream. Williams nearly make a mistake through Mulzahn Corner. Another thing to remember here, uh, Randy, Alexander Voss, it's his first lap behind the wheel of this car since the start of this event. Josh, he has done uh, about he's done five laps. Yeah, so he's had a little bit of time to work with here, has Josh, as they now work themselves out there and in towards the run towards Indianapolis. You're going to see every single time that Coanda car is going to lift out of it just a little bit early and allow the Williams car sort of open that gap up. That's sort of a couple things, I think, working in tandem. You're going to have, of course, these guys Wanted to give a little bit of space. Don't want to run over, of course, uh, the car in front of you at the head of the field as Alexander locks the tires up at Arnaud just a little bit. But he's going to be feeling the pressure here from uh, Josh Rogers. But it's going to be the fuel save playing in effect as well for that Coanda machine um, as Alex just going to cycle in here. And no matter what happens, you're not going to see that purple car past that number two machine for any situation until the very, very end of this motor race. Josh is going to want the full effect of the slipstream, even if the two car starts backing them up to that sort of second gaggle of cars, the likes of Jawad Peroni, Dominic Farber, and uh, Louis Guiana. Um, he, there's no reason for Josh to even attempt to make a move here. He just doesn't have the pace with the fuel save, the way things are currently working out. He needs to protect the draft at all costs. I would imagine that basically with Josh, he wouldn't even make that move on that last lap until the run down to Porsche Curve, potentially. Uh, or maybe into Indianapolis. I suppose it's Voss again, wide out of the corner. And Josh is just planting it right there, right behind. And he's going to park on that rear bumper of that uh, BMW M8 GTE car here on the iRacing service. Great addition to the service is this car and uh, it's wonderful you can race it in all sorts of different championships the IMSA series as well as the uh, Iris Le Mans series as well so you can uh, you can race this car uh, against some very competitive fields and uh, some big competition as well so uh, yeah, I do encourage you to try it I've, uh, I've been uh, a little bit as well myself I'm not very quick in the car though that's the thing I'm not a, really a GT driver 
Well, I mean, you got to remember, Paul, you and I, the likes of us, we're not very quick unless we're talking about scarfing down lunch. <laughs> but uh, as um, you see, Josh is pulling up on the slit stream once again. But you are right. I love having this car in the sim. But most notably, just because it's a different looking car. All the other GT e cars we have, of course, mid engine. Uh, you know, they all sort of have a, a similar style aesthetic to them, but this machine, you know, especially, you know, I know for you and I both, we both reign from teams that have touring car racing style backgrounds. And this just sort of has the aesthetic of a touring car uh, to it, doesn't it? It's a little bit bigger, looks a little bit more like a, uh, like a saloon. As Josh still working the draft as uh, looking at that second group behind. They've since gotten themselves really spread out. There's a blue and yellow car, by the way, who's a lap down. That's the AA blue, AAR blue car of Jason Harrison. That sort of divides these two packs, and you see uh, Alex maybe try to break it. Uh, one has to wonder if you're Alexander Vospal, do you start maybe pressuring that Coanda car from the front in the sense of maybe you don't maintain full pace, you really make it so you either back that group up to the likes of the Agent K and Pure Racing Team cars, or you know maybe you feign a couple mistakes, try to get Josh to pass to you, then make him burn as much fuel as you can. I think that's a dangerous tactic, I really do, because if you do bring other cars involved in that group, that's just more cars to be able to use the slipstream to get past you and yourself. So I think really you would really want to keep it just the two of them because you can control that to a degree, that two car group. As soon as you get three, four, five or even six cars involved in a group, you get that multiple draft, like the you know the third car in line gets a two-car draft. You can lose the lead here, so I think that would be a really dangerous tactic to try and play there. But I do think that maybe trying to put a bit of the a little bit of the pressure onto Josh is certainly a good idea. Just maybe not backing them right back into that uh, next group. And, and one thing that I think we also need to talk about as well, Paul, is the fact that we, we've talked about the fact that Josh has been fuel saving as hard as he has this entire race. He, he spent a very large chunk of that first stint as the lead car. We saw him for the opening handful of laps, well, Mitchell anyways. We saw Mitchell sort of the, op the, the leading car for the opening handful of laps uh, before they kind of shuffled second in line. And then, of course, the last couple laps, remember they had that entire group kind of split them up and come down pit road a bit earlier than all the rest. Now they're going to spend, you know, the second half of the stint locked in the slipstream with the race leader. This is going to make their fuel number a lot more beneficial for them as they work through this last half hour, thinking that, you know, Josh is unlikely to do anything up until those closing moments. He basically gets 30 minutes here to spend locked in the slipstream, saving as much fuel as possible. Uh, I will mention, whilst this, uh, whilst this intriguing strategic battle is going on, out the front there is some battling further down the field as well an asymmetric orange mechanic and team unique they've been battling over 21st place down the mulzahn straight they've been swapping between them uh, at the start of the mulzahn then into the second chicane as well so uh, these guys have been put on a little bit of a show further down so the, ra the racing isn't just at the front of the field here it's also further back schubert motorsports vv alignment Two, the uh, the 129 car has had an issue at the second chicane on the Mulzahn. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a look at that and find out. It looks like it's just all on the run here, Randy. Yeah, it seems that way. It just comes through the second chicane, and there's a little bit of a transition when you cross over the paint. They seem to have actually, it sort of started at the apex of it. They kind of clip the curb and come off the curb at the apex of the chicane. A little bit awkward. That sort of causes the car to bounce just a little bit and then they sort of cross over the pain of the white line on the left hand side and that left rear tire just loses a little bit of grip because of it and the car just slides around so unfortunate there unfortunate there for the 129 machine as it sees them go into the wall and that's going to be hurting them actually race lead picking up a little bit josh yeah. is starting to lose that slipstream so alexander voss handful of laps has gone through he's been struggling now that gap starting to open up a little bit in favor of that one Williams car. Yeah, it is. So uh, maybe a little bit of a mistake from Josh or something like that. I noticed that Josh was struggling a little bit to keep up through the uh, Porsche curves with that aero push that you will get. The thing is, if that gap gets any more than 1.1, I mean, he's on the edge of, of the slipstream now. I think he's just 
caught, got the end of the slipstream here, so he is starting to slightly gain here. But if it goes any bigger, that gap, he'll lose the, he'll definitely lose the slipstream, and that'll pretty much be game over for the VRS going the Sim Spot car. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and I think. I honestly think they're in a situation, Paul, that they need to use the fuel up a little bit. We know that Alex really hasn't had the pace of his teammate. And I think if you're Josh Rogers, knowing that if you catch up, you're going to get the draft. I think burn up a little bit of extra fuel to bring that gap back down and in and get back into the slipstream. I think that'd be more than a, uh, a relevant decision to make. I tell you what, whoever's the team manager of, uh, of this particular car, whoever's the, uh, the race engineer, They'll be doing some furious... Oh, um, Alex wide. Yeah, they'll be doing... Well, that'll help bring that draft back down, but the uh, the Coanda car will be doing some furious calculations there, trying to figure out what exactly uh, numbers that they need. It was, in fact, a slowdown penalty for Josh, so obviously pushing hard in that car to keep with that, and that's the trouble that he gets as he's actually going to look for getting past Alexander, is he? Well, he's alongside... And he's putting the pressure on. So Josh, he means business. Has he reached his fuel number? It is possible. He may have spent the first kind of stretch of the stint saving really, really hard. Because we got to remember, he came out in completely clean air. Had no slipstream after the pit stop to help with the fuel saving. He may have just put, they may have pushed him an extra little bit of, of, uh, of aggressive on the fuel save for the opening handful of laps until this point. And now the slipstream may be saving a little bit. Could also just be uh, providing the pressure here, Paul. Because remember, we've seen Alex make a couple of mistakes. He's been wide in a couple of the corners and he's not had the speed that Lauren Heinrich had. Lauren was down in the 45s. Right now, Alex is basically circulating running 47s, which is what Mitchell was doing out there fuel saving in the Coanda car that's now up the, up the rear tailpipe. So now for Alex, or excuse me, for Josh, he's seeing Alex struggling a little bit. Maybe he's the one providing the pressure here, trying to force that two car into a mistake. Yep, that's exactly what I think is happening here, and uh, it's going to provide us with an intriguing end to the race. Under half an hour remaining, we're into the final quarter of this race. I hope you've all been enjoying this uh, BMW 120 at Le Mans event here on the Irish and Esports Network. Paul Smith and Randy Cheneth here with Hugo Lewis behind the cameras and uh, running the stream here. And, uh, well, this certainly is really been an interesting strategic battle and right now Josh he's in that slipstream and he's just gonna sit there and in fact no he's not he's getting right up to the back bumper look at that view from from the rear of Boop. that Williams eSport car and uh, I don't think you get any closer than that really uh, it'd be a tough ask in order to do that I think for sure it's uh you know, he was definitely right there. Bit of a boot. Better run for Alex, though, out of that first chicane. Not quite uh, staying right on the rear uh, tailpipe there was uh, Josh. But, uh, yeah, that was right up against it. And the thing is, that's what you want to do, Paul. You want to get as close as you can, make the driver behind really have to sweat when and where you're going to lift out of it. Because, of course, you don't want to brake a little bit early when you have a car that close to you because you always run the risk of the uh, the accordion effect and maybe catching that driver behind out. So just making Alex think is Josh, and this is what I like to see when you're doing the fuel save situation. Some drivers, they won't get overly aggressive, and they'll... Uh, they'll just sort of sit there and be patient i like the fact that josh rogers is willing to show the nose in a couple places just like this going down the molson even though he's saving gas he pulls out for a moment that's really not going to cost him very much in terms of the fuel calculation but it may do a lot in the, in the mental state of that driver of the williams esports car uh, uh, in front of him and you see there alex a little bit wide on the exit of the molson and josh able to close right back up and here's one of the keys to this circuit as well Josh is getting the run out of the corner by doing this, by going slower in. He's getting the better run through those slower corners to get on the power earlier. He's carrying that speed out of the corner. So it's a really efficient way of getting up to uh, the top speed of this vehicle. So he's saving fuel uh, with the lifting and coasting of the car, but also getting that run out the corner, which means that he's not having to accelerate quite as much much to get to the same speed so uh, definitely uh, good uh, tactics from Josh as we've seen Alexander has been pushing that car and especially to Mulsanne corner he was wide through there and here comes Josh again he's just showing his nose here 
He's letting Alexander know that he's there and he's wanting to uh, make the move when he's ready to make that move. Uh, and I think that's going to be key here with Josh. It's just going to be that waiting game, waiting until uh, towards the end of the race before he does make that move. We'll say Josh is bluffing more than a poker star semi-pro playing their first live 1-2 game. Uh, if any, I don't know if there's anyone who does a bit of... Uh, poker playing but Josh is being really aggressive with the way he's throwing these bluffs out at Alexander at the moment and like I said it's so much fun to see I don't think there's any real intent for him to be able to uh, to make this spot up here but it's 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 really good racecraft and really shows Paul the sort of ability that those drivers at Quan to have because we don't often find ourselves in these GT races in these sort of fuel safe situations and typically when we do the, the races are so strung out he sort of has a unique situation having the pace compared to the car in front of him where he feels safe and the car ahead is not. And being able to really show the aggression like that is a rare skill. Absolutely. Further down your order, worth pointing out that Agent K and Pure Racing Team Blue in third and fourth, they're sticking together as they uh, have been for the last sort of 15, 20 minutes now. So they're, uh, they're staying in that order. Motif Project Black. Now this is one of the, uh, one of the cars that has actually done two pit stops they're down in 12th place but they're right on the tail of the Mucha Motorsport Sim Racing pink car and uh, they are uh, pushing hard they've obviously got the fuel to be able to push hard they do, they've done two stops that Mucha Motorsport's car they're trying to make it on one stop here so uh, Motef they're uh, certainly trying to uh, push on and get the positions and not that far behind them as well as the BMW team Kateng. In fact, there goes the Mucker car onto pit road. They can't make it. So they're gonna have to do the uh, the short fuel now. But uh, I was mentioning Brad. Oh, we got a car in the dirt at Porsche Curves. This is LFO Racing, Miguel Castro. Oh yeah. the cycle back on track, but a very, very wide run through the first part of Porsche Curves, and he just sort of got it wrong into the right-hander all by himself. I think he pushed a little bit deep, got a little bit tight, and he just pushed off into the gravel, so well held there by the 15 car. That can be a scary case to go off, Paul, not only because you're getting into the gravel, but you, you, when you recycle back out onto the racetrack, you have to go over first a transition of gravel onto grass, which can be difficult, and then grass onto the asphalt into the line of racing, especially as you go into that second... Uh, left-hander so that was well held by that LFO car being able to cycle in found a nice gap and uh, they pretty much took it as the Muka car now gonna exit pit road and they're gonna cycle actually just behind that number 15 car so that's quite handy yeah absolutely um, I, I was going to point out as well the battle that was going on as well between Romello Motorsport and team uh, BMW team Katang as well Nicky Katzberg and Kevin Avell they're battling away and they have actually switched positions so that Romello Motorsports car back in front of the uh, BMW team Katane car. So that's 12th and 13th battling it out further down your field. So we're, we're you reckon out. they're going to get a top 10? That is going to be quite the task unless a few of the cars from the top 10 have to come onto the pits, which we do imagine they will need to. So that'll be fun to watch. Well, yeah. Nikki seems keen on picking up another spot here. This will be on Kevin Arell. I believe this will be for 11th. I believe our timing needs to update. No, it's going to be for 12th. 12th. I take that back. So he picks that 12th spot back up, does Nikki Katzberg, as Josh once again providing the pressure going into Porsche Curves as we're going to be inside of 20 minutes to go, I believe, by the time they get to the strike. Maybe not quite. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's, just, keeping, he's just keeping the pressure on here. We're, we're, going to be heading towards the 20 minute mark here and uh, my timing screen is still saying we're going to be hitting 32 laps here so it'll be interesting to see how we do for time when we're getting towards the end here whether we do get that extra lap or not that extra lap will favour the Williams Eastport car but the way Josh Rogers has been he's, uh, he's just sitting behind sitting in that substream getting that fuel saving and really, he's, uh, he's been pushing hard whilst doing that fuel saving as well. Keep the pressure on, that's exactly what he needs to do. And Josh Rogers run board with him here into the uh, first chicane. Underneath the Dunlop Bridge once again here. Start of lap 27 for these two here. And they're coming through now, the, the S's here. 
really good section of the track there because the road is cambered in your favour through those two corners and then they head into Tet Rouge once again the fast right hander that you head on down onto Mulzan straight it is a it is a great track to uh, to race on and to, to do laps on here uh, Randy and we're fortunate we get the opportunity to do that on the sim at any time we want uh, in pretty much any cars that are available on the sim as well some cars favor this track more than others though I wouldn't suggest doing it in the uh, solstice well I mean the, the, <laughs> the solstice can be quite fun especially when you if you do it uh, we've done it at Team Chimera in the past which is uh, stick Ben Tusting into a Pontiac solstice while a couple of us pile into the FR 500 S Ford Mustang and push him around this place to see how fast we can get him to go uh, that was quite fun that was a good time but uh, for Alexander Voss and the winner of the eSports car, still struggling with this at the moment. And you have to actually wonder, Paul, about what this race could have looked like if Warren Heinrich wasn't able on that opening lap to stretch out such a huge advantage. We saw him up into the Dunlop chicane for the first time, slotted up the inside, and they basically just sent it through the next couple of sequence of corners and open up a huge margin. That's the entire reason this group that's currently leading this race is in the situation they're at, because if Lauren hadn't been able to, to break out in those opening couple of moments so quickly, you likely would have seen the same game being played by PRT and Kawanda, just, you know, being able to just about stick with them in the draft. And you'd have been talking about them potentially being 10 seconds further down the road and Alex trying to reel Josh in. Well, I, I would put it to you this. I think they deliberately did that, tried to get the advantage. And if they hadn't have done that, if they hadn't have managed that on the opening lap, they would have just that in and just slotted in with well, that no, leading remember group. They started with a light car. They were committed. Well, they didn't though because they, they pitted uh, because they were pushing all the way two laps earlier than this Coanda car. So I, I think it was a full fuel car and uh, I think if that tactic hadn't have worked, they would have slotted in with that group. But that, uh, if is the biggest word in motorsport, isn't it? And that's exactly what we uh, what we have right here. Graphite Racing, they're battling with the uh, V Apex Racing Group Gold Car uh, further down into the uh, Ford Chicane. That's 32nd and 33rd. So uh, good battling, as we've been seeing all the way through the field. We mentioned it earlier uh, in the race that there was four retirements. There's now six retirements from this race here. Uh, so. Uh, only two more cars so it's a really good rate of attrition in this event here still 42 in fact 41 cars because there is one car on pit road for a long time and that's the boosted red car of george simmons they've been parked for almost four minutes now on pit road so obviously getting some uh, repairs done there but um, yeah it's it's a really good rate of attrition but, but to be fair the more really does lend itself to a good race of attrition does this track yeah, it often does. I mean, we, we don't have the mechanical failures. As you see, that 32nd place car of Casper de Court and Graphite Racing picks up a good run coming onto the first stretch of the Mulsanne. And Ryo Fu Fujisaki in the 32nd place, currently driving the Project First GT team number 53, pulls over to driver's right. Let's see if he's going to facilitate this pass because the 92 seems to have a little bit more top speed, maybe running a uh, slightly lower rear ride height. You know all these teams will have that rear wing absolutely flattened out but of course there are different rake levels uh, potentially at play for everyone also potentially even spring packages and the way that car works down the straightaway is maybe a little bit different for everybody depending on the sort of chassis setup they have in the car not to mention of course Casper has a slipstream exiting Tetra Rouge this time though it's going to flip flop but it doesn't seem like Rio has the legs on that number 92 car. So somehow finding a way was that Graphite Racing team to get a little bit extra top speed out of it compared to who they're currently fighting with. I have seen, I mentioned about the, uh, the BMW Motorsport tweeting out. They did mention on Twitter that they've had a chat with uh, Philip Peng and he's having to uh, crunch the numbers on uh, on uh, the uh, Kateng strategy because they don't know whether they'll need the second stop. Uh, so uh, hopefully for their sake, they don't need that second stop. Speaking of teams having the second stop, uh, Leo Racing Team, Luigi Nespolino on pit road now for their splash and dash. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it seems like Nikki maybe getting a little bit of a slowdown or something coming off that final corner. So for Catsburg, now it's all sorts of wondering of what the fuel strategy looks like. I wonder if they if they end up having to do a, a, a splash and dash at the end of the race. Do you think their engineers are going to hang it over their head when it comes to the real race as we look at Agent K and Pure Racing Team Blue? Um... <sighs> I'll be honest with you, I didn't really catch that that one because I was looking at the timing screen and looking at a few other things. Um, I did catch that question, but um, I'll try and answer it with another question, which is uh, a case of Pew Race Team and Agent K, are they settled in for uh, third place here? Well, I, I think so. I think especially with that Pure Racing Team blue car, at least in the official results, we know that Jawad Caroni in that number thir 13 machine currently runs third. will technically get disqualified. Oh, maybe a slowdown from Caroni there. He pulls right over to the right-hand side. Going to let that PRT car go. Actually, maybe some fuel save situations here as well. So maybe Jawad just wants to draft to work this final 14 minutes of the race for that extra little bit of, uh, of fuel save. Although he's not pulling into the slipstream after Dominic goes by. So interesting there and it's an interesting line to the little right hand kink i will say on the right hand side of the curb um so yeah interesting line being taken there with that purple car but we know that uh caroni um this being a, a team event he won't hold that position come the end of it as though nikki katzberg not gonna save too much fuel he's gonna fight with a 21 car maybe getting let loose saying either they can make it or they can't make it either way and to just go as hard as he can whether he makes it or not or they have to come down pit road I think you could tell which car has been stuck up behind another car more than the other one on that one because one car <laughs> is pretty much white at the front the other one is a dark grey and that's the, uh, the car that's behind the uh, the number 21 car with a really dark front end there so as you can see it on the screen there flashing the headlights he uh, is wanting back past again but um, it just goes to show you the dynamic surfaces and the, the way that iRacing works it also affects the cars as well and the, the amount of rubber and uh, detritus that gets thrown up at these cars so oh, spinner behind them and that's a speed asylum and they're going to drop a place so down to 14th for them back up and running but uh, look uh, Luke Krause not the best run through there all in his only lost it on the entry there yeah unfortunate there for Luke just you know little kind of lazy spin there through the Mulsanne didn't quite get the turn in right and actually he had that car the left tires over the paint on the left hand side as well we saw that car earlier I can't remember who it was spin at the second chicane getting the uh the left side tires over the white paint we saw the exact same situation there as we have a couple cars on pit road triple nine is one of them as well as the HR racing number 206 who we haven't I don't think really talked about haven't really talked about them pretty much all race long I will say that 206 has a bit of uh debris on the head of that car as well as it's a it's almost got a nice fade like the williams cars have yeah. going with the paint scheme with the way it sort of fades from gray to white uh, there's another car on pit road as well it's number six kc racing esports car so a few of those second stops now happening with 11 just over 11 minutes remaining in this race this race has flown by actually for me i've, I've really enjoyed this one uh, it's been an intriguing battle and as we're heading to this final, oh my goodness, look at this pack of cars here. Uh, this isn't <laughs> going to end well. Going into Mulzahn, this is a, oh, a little bit of possible contact there. And, uh, well, out of there, they go up and uh, Impulse Racing having a few uh, technical issues there. They've, uh, they've gone, unfortunately. Uh, but one thing I will say is um, these final pit stops, this is where we get to see that mix of uh, two stops versus one stop strategies and uh, so far bmw team katenga having to make a second pit stop here as well so they didn't have enough fuel for the end of this one as we carry on watching this battle further down and uh yeah muka motorsports you've got team andreas uh, espinoza you've got uh, impact racing as well hopefully they don't make too much of an impact on the cars around them uh, but hey. yeah we've got a uh, I had to get that in at least one time in this race um, but yeah we've, we've got multiple multiple cars uh, happening uh, 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 having to come into the pits for a second pit stop and uh, t BMW Team Kang is one of those but they should be good for fuel and they'll push on to the end but look at this battle through the Porsche curves here and uh, well Team Andreas Espinosa they are uh, giving it absolutely 
absolutely everything here. Yeah, he is Team Andres Espinoza, driven by spoiler alert, Team Andres Espinoza all over the back of Matteo Lacat in the impact racing number one. Ooh, a bit of an awkward moment into the Ford chicane there for Andres. Wasn't, he, he was really tight under the uh, rear wing there of Mateo, but didn't really give, I think, enough space there. And he sort of had to take a weird line. That brings in the LFO BMW of Ricardo Fernandez just a little bit. That car is a lot down, but actually that car seemingly struggled with speed as the gap immediately opens back up. So Andres trying to close in and pick up that 24 spot here in the waning moments of this, uh, this race. And I do have to give way and say, probably looks like we are going to make that 32 lap marker that I was a little skeptical on. Yeah, the, the pace has been there uh, fr from the leaders, really, to uh, to get that uh, that 32 laps. And uh, we'll see how that falls for the uh, the Coanda car in terms of their fuel saving. But they should be good now, you would imagine, with the amount of draft that they've had there at the front. You would imagine they're going to be good for fuel. The pace has picked up at the front. 46.3 for Williams Esport, 46.6 for Vera's Quantum spot, so that pace has gained a little bit from Alexander Voss now, but it's still not been at the level of his teammate, Lauren Heinrich. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he's, he's picked it up a little bit. Of course, the track conditions may be changing uh, ever so slightly, but it's, uh, I will say it's going to be interesting to see if that coin of car ends up picking up the wind, Paul. That'll be a driver coming from Australia and a driver coming from California. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, it's not the only time either um, that they've, had, <laughs> they've made the trip over to Europe as uh, the Coanda car was a little bit wide through um, through the uh, Tech Rouge corner, but they're able to stick in that slipstream and catch up. But um, yeah, if they do end up uh, winning this event, they'll be heading to Le Mans and uh, getting that VIP experience. I had a little bit of that as well myself, but um, but yeah, as we uh, head on down the Mulls Arm, lap 30 of this race, so we are looking at around 32 laps in this event as Williams Jimmy Spots make their second pit stop. That drops them down to eighth place in this one now, so uh, they've made a final splash and dash here, and most cars really have had two stops in this one uh, there's only been a handful of cars that have been able to make one stop work so far and uh, well the leading well, well the second place car should I say is one of those but uh, Pure Racing Team and Agent K they've also been uh, another two that have been working that one stop strategy and Agent K they're back behind uh, the Pure Racing Team car uh, we saw them have that like a slowdown penalty that allowed the uh, pure racing team car to get ahead but i think jared corona will be happy at the uh, the slipstream just to save a little bit of fuel in this one uh, we've also had a change of position further down sixth place now hr racing they've pulled ahead of the uh, triple nine car so that's a change of position for uh, your uh, mid Mid top 10 there is uh, Vieras Quanta Simspot, Josh Rogers, looking to the outside of Indianapolis. Well, he, he's been getting aggressive, and as the moments start to tick down, Paul, they're going to be coming to two laps to go with this uh, this time through. You're going to want to pick the aggression up because obviously, if you're Josh, you're going to be making the move here sooner rather than later. Uh, because you know coming to the end of the race so eventually one of these moves are going to be legit as he moves over to the outside on the run to Porsche curves he's all the way on the left hand side is this maybe a legit move no he's going to lift out of it well early and let Alexander roll into it with the race lead but at some point you know for Alexander Voss it's going to be difficult to distinguish I think eventually which one of these moves are legitimate and which one of them aren't and I have to you know I honestly think if I'm Josh Rogers Paul do you maybe pull the trigger a little bit earlier? Because Alex is going to be probably of the... Oh, Josh was really wide on the extra uh, exit of carding. If he caught a slowdown, that could be a killer for them. It doesn't look like he uh, did. So I think getting away with one a little bit, maybe the number eight car, because that was very, very close. But if you're Josh Rogers, you may want to trigger uh, pull the trigger a little bit early as he's off the track again. Maybe think Alex... Uh, maybe make Alex think that you're... Uh, bluffing and then just essentially drive right on past him 
I mean, the thing is, the more the, the later into this race they go, the more likely the moves are going to be legitimate. And so I think Alexander Voss starts needing to, to think about uh, positioning his car in defensive ways to, to hold on to that lead into crucial parts of, the, of this track. As Agent K onto pit road, they've not been able to save the fuel. They're having to have a splash and dash as we're into the final five minutes. wonder if the 71 minutes. can make it, because they're on the same fuel number, remember? Yeah. Uh, Sorg Rensport Esports, the 101 car, they're onto pit road as well for a splash and dash. Now, they did pit a lap earlier oh, yeah, that's than right, the, that's right. uh, the VRS Quinn and Simsport car. So uh, this is really expected, to be fair, of the 101. But uh, how will that pan them out compared to the HR racing car? Because the HR racing car was about 28 seconds behind. That'll be interesting to see how that one all uh, falls here. Uh, uh, no, it was literally a splash and dash for that Sorg Rainsport car because they stopped and they got going again. Five seconds. And HR got clear of them. Oh, you mentioned that car. Look at HR Josh Rogers. Clear. Look at Josh Rogers here. He's making a move, is he? Is this finally the time that he's pulling the trigger? He's got lap traffic ahead. He could have used them as a bit of a slipstream as well to try and slingshot and get out in front. But he decides to pull in back away again. But um, yeah, this is uh, this is starting to get a little bit more intense now between these two. And I think Alexander is realizing that that move is coming sooner rather than later. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And unfortunately for Josh, that race leader is going to have that little bit of slipstream. And we need to pick up the intensity here, Paul, because we're coming to the white flag here in just about a minute's time. So uh, Michael Bush in the Schubert Motorsport VVLN car will likely move over to the right-hand side of the racetrack and let this duo through with these guys running for the race lead. As he moves over, you're going to see Alex run the slipstream as much as he can. Josh didn't get a great run, but he's still going to be able to easily drive clear of this lapper as he works works his way down the back straightaway. Actually, very smart by Alex there to yep. break the slipstream. Not going to matter, though, as a two of Alexander Voss. He just hasn't had the top speed as he really puts the pressure to Josh Rogers. Looks on the outside again as Alex runs the tight line in towards Indianapolis as they run through Arnaud for the penultimate time. Here we go. Look at this. The lights are flashing now. Josh Rogers, he wants by. We all know what flashing lights mean in, uh, in these types of events. Let me pass. I I am coming through and Josh Rogers now is this the point where they ma he makes that move a very defensive drive there from the Williams eSport driver of Alexander Voss oh they bump oh. doors there between the two of them and Josh Rogers he's sideways he's drifting he's going through the gravel and that I feel is the race win right there gone and we, so we've seen him be aggressive a couple of times, and I don't think it's the smartest thing for Josh trying to make that move on the outside of Porsche curves like that. Little bit of contact upsets the rear end of that VRS Coanda Sinsport number eight car, and that has opened up a huge margin for Alexander Voss and Williams Esports as that Coanda car will cycle into the second spot. I will say that's, that half spin was well held by Josh, but... You know, we know that he's going to pick the aggression up, Paul, and the bluffing was eventually going to stop. I just don't know if that's ever the point of the racetrack you want to make that move. I feel like with a with you know a lap left to go as we now take the white flag, you know, making the pass into Porsche curves when you're that close to him and you've just spent the last 59 minutes tucked underneath, well, the last 30 minutes, excuse me, just being patient under the rear wing, why wouldn't you just wait until you get down in towards the uh, chicanes or even make the move for the last time through Porsche Curves? That said, the gap looks like it's coming down. Alex may be struggling a little bit. Josh is reeling him in. Yeah, so uh, here we go then. Uh, maybe it's Alex just thinking of uh, doing the right thing and allowing uh, Josh back close to him to give him the opportunity again although in a highly competitive environment like this um, you never know but, but um, anyway Josh has got the bit between his teeth he's going absolute hammer and tongs for that lead he wants the lead there's um, been battling further down as well six and seventh they've been uh, pretty much deck and neck between the two of them as well as they're heading to the four chicane for the start of their final lap here but what drama what absolute drama there to happen but it was a brilliant save from josh rogers here comes the move for that sixth place 
and the triple nine back into that sixth place. You just get the feeling that it's all Ren Sport. Even though they had that splash and dash, they may be given that spot. Josh Rogers is now 2.2 seconds behind. He's not gaining on the race leader. He's been flashing his headlights there. A little bit of a um, little bit of lap traffic has helped out the uh, driver of Alexander Voss. And Josh Rogers, he is not in a good mood at all. And quite frankly, I wouldn't blame him either, Andy. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be frustrated for sure after that incident in Porsche curves, but I don't, I don't think there's much to be frustrated about. I think the move was, wasn't was quite on for Josh there, and he needed to pull out of that a little bit earlier, but I still don't think it's just done just yet. As a little bit wide with Alexander Voss at the exit of Mulsanne, it'll be a big ask for Josh to re re uh, reel this gap in, but I, I think the gap was a little bit larger than 2.2 when they got to the stripe. It's currently two seconds at the moment. He's brought it in a couple tenths since exiting Mulsanne. I just think it's a little bit too far. Alexander Voss is uh, into the second half of the lap now, and this is where uh, he has got to just consolidate his advantage here into Indianapolis for the final time. Now Arnaj, he can almost uh, sense it, but Josh Rogers is there looming in his mirrors outside of Arnaj now and heading towards Porsche curbs for the final time. This team, Williams Esport, they made a jump of it at the start of this race, made a daring move to immediately grab hold of the lead. And they pulled out a gap, trying to make that two-stop strategy work. And right now, it does appear to be working. A little bit of fortune has helped them out in this one as well with that contact between them and Coanda Simsport. But as they come around Porsche curves into Karting Corner, and he's only got the Ford chicane to go now. It's easy to make a mistake there, though. There's a car letting them by. They can want to just finish on this lap. In fact, I think they might be done for fuel. But into the Ford chicane now for the final time. Alexander Voss, he can see the checkered flag in front of him. Out the final corner, across the timing line to win the BMW 120 event at Le Mans. What a victory it is for Williams Esport. But my God goodness were they made to work for that one fantastic drive from them to get the win in the end uh, i don't think quite the will be too happy with how that one ended dominic farber for pure racing team rounds out your podium in this event as we look further back as well and uh, BM, uh, well we've got the sixth seventh and eighth spots here williams jimmy spots have made their moves forward and that triple nine car has dropped down so they're having to do some major fuel saving in this one and the 88 of uh, dado upchat moving up to seventh then towards the end of this race and uh, that's been a good effort from them and this one here through the porsche curves and cut corner once again there he is with his uh, colorful outfit on the black helmet at the wheel into the braking zone and uh, well through the chicane he's saving fuel he's having to but he'll make it to the end here only just makes it to the end because it was a two-stop strategy and he pushed that fuel to the end and well that set them through worth pointing out as well that the bmw Catane car they started this race in 43rd that's right 43rd position and they are currently in 12th position here as they come through the porsche curves and nikki katzberg and philip Heng. it's been a tremendous effort from the two bmw factory drivers here to be able to get this car so far through the field they'll be disappointed with their qualifying not being able to get a lap time in but this has been a cracking effort and a good bit of practice for them in the sim before they head on down to france and go and race at the Le Mans 24 hours in the BMW M8 GTA area through the final chicane there and across the line they go for 12th place in this event close battling still Mucca Motorsports in racing pink and the Volcano Porsche LMP1 team 
Oh, just that little bit too late to say, uh, a little bit too late to make any moves, should I say? And those two come across the line there. The other Mooker Motor Spot car as well. They're battling it out. Our timing screen's in the both in 22nd place. I don't think that's quite right there. Uh, but they are pretty close to the Project First GT team. And that's for 21st, 22nd position uh, between those two cars. They're coming through Karting Corner once again. And uh, they'll be headed towards the Fall Chicane. I don't think they're quite close enough to make a move here at the end. But Tony Loesch will give it absolutely everything onto the brakes for the Fall Chicane. Launch it over the kerbs and then absolutely send it over the kerbs in the second part here as well. But it's the 53 Project First GT team. They had a couple of issues in this race. They go through across the line there to take that 21st position. But um, just looking through the rest of the field, it looks like a few of the teams have had uh, fuel issues and not been able to make it to the end. So uh, we'll have to wait for everything to all pan out before it goes official and we get the final results of this one. But uh, Randy, what a race. And... Uh, <laughs> That was uh, that was breathtaking. I absolutely enjoyed every minute of that race. Yeah, that was. Uh, isn't that everything you ever want in a Lamar race to have? <laughs> you have different fuel strategy. You have the draft playing effect. You have uh, uh, some drama coming to the white flag. Luckily, we didn't have anyone blow a turbo and come to a stop on the front straightaway because uh, that would have been heartbreaking. But uh, yeah, absolutely stellar run to that one. I will say, what a final lap though from Josh Rogers. Even though he was, you know, that far back, he still was able to reel in while, you know, dealing with their fuel situation. Nearly a full second on that Williams Esports car. So I think we were, would have been in for an amazing final lap there if that little bit of contact forcing Josh on the AstroTurf, which, which is what it seemed like from my end. It was a light tap, which uh, ended up forcing that car around hadn't happened. But that was a... Uh, there's a great way to kick off Memorial Day here and the two big races we have uh, coming uh, of the Indy 500 and, of course, the uh, 600 at Charlotte. Well, here we go, then. These are going to be your final results of the race, and it is Williams Esport who take out the victory in this one. Fantastic drive from them to take the victory here. A little bit contentious, perhaps, but... Um, in the sim spot they end up finishing the second on the 1.4 seconds behind in the end there so great drive to come back to uh, another second they caught up in that final lap your racing team blue they round out your podium positions here with agent k fourth hr racing we really rarely really spoke about them they had a really good result founded out in the top five when sog ren sport esports william jimmy esports and then it is the triple nine of estre madura uh, they are in that seventh place then kc racing esports progressive sim eighth place and uh Leo Racing Team 9, Motef Project Black rounding up the top 10. The results have just improved, uh, changed slightly uh, because, of course, the uh, Agent K team did not use the second driver, so they automatically get disqualified. So Motef Project Black rounding up the top 10 there. 11th place for BMW Team Katang in the end with Mucka Motorsport Sim Racing Pick 12. We saw them battling towards the end with Romella Motorsport 13th, Speed Asylum 14th with Kinetic Racing Velocity 15th place, SRT Esports they were one of the early stoppers ran out the 16th place F RFRO 17th with Impact Racing 18th Project First GT Team 19th and Mucka Motorsport Sim Racing Yellow 20th Randy and you look down the rest of your field here, 21st, you have the V Apex Racing Group Gold Car, Graphite Racing in 22nd, Vertex Motorsports in 23rd, and the last car to finish on the lead lap, Just Print Racing Black. Team Cheese and Wine, can you, can you name anything more French than that? A team named Team Cheese and Wine running here at Le Mans. They end up in the 25th spot, Sub Racing Endurance in 26th. Orange Mechanic in 27th, saw them in some drama. Asymmetric 28th, LFO Racing 29th, and Team Unique in 30th, then taking you down the rest of your field. Schubert Motorsport, AAR Blue, Devotion BMW 120, V Racing Team GTE, LFO BMW, Vertex Motorsports Black, L Cube Racing 
Impulse Racing 1, Boosted Red, XCM, Anatolia Red, the BM1, BMW 120. Join me, Agent K, uh, Team Volcano, Porsche LMP1 Team, Team Andres Espinoza, V Racing, uh, Racing Team Le Mans, uh, Quido Con at Day, Oja Racing Team. Give that a good attempt at the end of the broadcast. Yeah. SRB Racing and Motorless bro, uh, Motorsport round out your 48 car field in the top split well one thing we will have a look at is the incident that happened on lap 31 and that is with the Coen the sim sport we'll just uh, caught the end of it there so we'll uh, get that round back a little bit here we go then randy just talk us through this you just see that little bit of contact and i think what happened it was sort of a, a, a double moment there there was slight contact that forced josh wide and i think that put that left rear tire on that little bit of astroturf you see it turn, turn in and when he was trying to turn that car in and save it it's what really i think picked the slide up there for that uh Kalanda car so unfortunately we, you know you'll see what i'm looking at here you'll see almost two different kind of spikes of the uh uh, of the car kind of starting to go around here then another little bit of contact helps him hold on to it but uh unfortunate moment there for josh i know they were running hard uh and you know huge patience coming out there the strategy ends up just about working out for them through the bulk, through the bulk of the race just one little moment can kill their dreams and that's all it takes at lamas sometimes one slight mistake can be the end of hours worth of work well, what an amazing race that was. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, that incident happened there. And uh, basically, uh, the way that uh, he held that slide, to be fair to him, was brilliant car control. But that's all that we've got time for here on this broadcast today. So thank you very much for joining us here for this BMW 120 at Le Mans event. Heard broadcast on the iRacing Esports Network with Racebot TV. Um, well, thank you to the people behind the broadcast. This fan below, TrekCams22.com for the uh, providing the camera packs for us. Hugo Lewis, brilliant work as always from him to uh, to to basically uh, bring us the pictures that you see on screen. I've been Paul Smith and Randy Chenoff, and well, congratulations to Williams Esports. Not only did they win this race, they've also won two t VIP tickets to Le Mans with BMW M Motorsports. For myself and everybody here at Racebot TV, it's goodbye. <laughs>